<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. My name is Taylor Lewan. To my right is a very handsome Will Compton. This is episode 208. Listen, the football season's over, but that does not mean we're going to stop rooting for our favorite team, and that team is the she is Chevy, and it's franchise player, the Silverado, a truck with unstoppable grit and determination. According to J.D. Power, Chevy trucks have earned more new vehicle awards than any other brand, and that is some serious hardware. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Silverado is strong and dependable as the people who drive them. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. You can see it in Will's face a little bit. If you point back the camera back at Jack McPherson, you can see it. And then although I'm speaking fast, my energy seems high. We're a little bit on E boys because we're from Thursday to Sunday. The boys were out in Las Vegas, Nevada for some UFC, some little bit of gambling with the boys, mm. a little bit of power slap and a whole lot of networking. Now I will give Will and I some flowers here. Not a lot of gentlemen in their early 30s for Will mid 30s are going to go to Las Vegas, spend business time working, grinding, and not have one sip of alcohol. And these two gentlemen you're staring at right now did just that. Now, please go to Jack McPherson. This man, not a lot of people. Zoom in on his face. Zoom in on his face. Not a lot of people could go to Las Vegas get about four hours total in sleep and still show up to work on Monday. Smoothie in hand, knowing the grind is upon him this evening when he goes to get his workout, you know he's going to be there because it's Get Jacked 2023. The boys fucking did it. And if I'm going to speak for the whole crew here, you guys can interject if you'd like. There's no way that weekend could have possibly gone better. William? No, the weekend was phenomenal. The, the UFC, that whole crew, the way they hosted the boys, Rolled out the red carpet for us. Five-star treatment. I'm nice. talking, dude, meeting Paul Craig, meeting Forrest Griffin, meeting all the big dogs at UFC, man. It was, uh, dude, it was an experience like you that I will remember forever. Like, we're hitting the pad. We're, like, doing the slap pad, measuring the output and everything, and then doing the punching and all that stuff for content. When you have a... Um, one of the one of the big time agents, Audi Atar, he reps Conor McGregor. He reps he reps a lot of guys in that space. He's watching us. You got about twenty people standing around watching us. Paul Cray basically inserts himself and starts swinging with us. And at the time, like I'm not as privy to the UFC rosters as I was back when it was Rampage, Forrest Griffin, and all those boys. Paul Craig comes up and starts swinging with us and measuring it all. He's got this awesome Scottish accent. Yeah, he sounded cool. Just a badass dude. And then he takes us into the octagon. We get to do some face-offs, and, like, then he's teaching me to do a triangle, a triangle choke. Like, he's rolling around a little bit. It was just fucking awesome. Then you go to the Performance Institute. We're measuring our output on force plates, uh, seeing, like, which, whims, which limb is weaker than the other. I'm jumping, trying to, like, you know, do, like, a little mini combine. Just I'm, like, in a full sweat by the end of that first day. I need a lot of ass sweat in the butt. But it was awesome, man. We did Fuck It Friday with Dana. Dana was all-time his crew. Marty, Skip, Matt. <laughs> They were a blast. I ate some of the best Thai food in my life that weekend. Like, it was all around. And we did. We didn't drink. <clears throat> you wish we had got a little bit more sleep because, you know, them hotels are just pumping the oxygen. Next thing you know, we're out there gambling. It's like 2 in the morning. Yeah. But it was all time, man. And Power Slap itself was incredible. And I feel like every single night, it was like, hey, every single day when we woke up, I'd be like, hey, early night tonight. Mm. Let's make sure get an early night in, get the juices back flowing. Let's not get back to Nashville feeling like we need a vacation. Now, luckily, the alcohol didn't, it wasn't consumed, so we feel a little bit better. But damn, I got back yesterday, like noon, and I was like, I felt, I got myself a little cat nap with my kids. I, I fell asleep at like nine o'clock. It was, I was fighting and grinding yeah. on Sunday just well, I to mean, kind of keep my composure. The daylight saving spring forward almost uh, took our lives. Us up, dude. Almost took our lives. That, dude, we got to fucking move on from that. Let's move on from daylight savings. It's such a ridiculous concept at this point. So much technology and shit now with the farmers. They don't need it. I'm not a farmer. They don't fucking need it, dude. I'm with JP's vibe. Like, we just got to take a stand as 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 a people and just not set our not change our clocks back. No, we are not doing this. Right. We're not going to start moving just because you guys changed the, changed the Apple iPhone. Like, set the time back. So you keep the time the same. Don't you guys do that in Arizona? Yeah, there's no daylight savings in Arizona. I don't even know about daylight savings until I got to Michigan. Yeah, we need the whole country needs to be operating on Arizona. Yeah, Arizona really fucking did it right, dude. If you if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. This is our opportunity to stand up against the people of this fucking daylight savings thing. I believe something is going on in the Congress or the Senate or something like that where they're actually trying to do something like that. So shout out the people up top 
getting something serious done because we need that figured out for all of us. Um, going back to Vegas real quick, I'm not going to get too much into it because there will be a video coming out. Well, you can tease now. I will tease. Yeah, I know you don't want to get too much into it. You got to give surface so You got to give a look into the cookie jar. I'm going to give you a look at, or uh, I'm going to verbally tell you what I believe was not filmed. And what was not filmed is Thursday afternoon. We literally fly in I, the earliest flight I've ever been in my entire life. It was a 5.15 a.m. flight from Nashville, Tennessee to Las Vegas. We get there. It's a full fucking day the whole time. We get to uh, the UFC complex. They have Fuck It Fridays. They're filming on Thursday. And then it's going to come out Friday. That whole type of thing. Dane is there. Um, and your boy's got a credit line. I got, I got a, a pretty hefty credit line because... Tell them the credit line. I'm not going to tell you guys the credit line. Just know that... It's six figures and it's, it's high. Okay. The reason why I have the credit line is not because I'm a massive gambler. It's one of those. I'd rather not have money in my pocket and you get a nice room. Things are comped. And I do like to gamble. However, the most money I've ever put down on a bet in my entire life was $2,000. And that, that was when I was up massively. And I was really trying to push. I ended up losing that weekend, by the way, if you're wondering. Dana White walks in. It's great to see him. At this point, we have a rapport. He was at the Super Bowl with us. And it seems like we've been boys forever at that point. We're hanging out and everything. I pull him to the side at one point. And I say, Dana, I've heard about your gambling. I've heard that you're kicked out of some casinos. I got myself a little credit line. And I was wondering if you can give me some tips. Before I could say, I was wondering if you can give me some tips. His eyes lit up as if his forehead vanished. And it was all just eyes from the cheek up. But his intensity, it wasn't intensity. an excitement. It was like. He looks at me and says, what's your credit line? I go, uh, um, it's X, Y, Z, that number, hefty number. He looks at me and goes, tonight, what are you doing tonight? Are you guys going, what are you guys, are you guys going out? And I was like, no, I'm not, we're not going out. He goes, tonight, you and me, we're gambling and we're going, we're fucking. And then he gives me this speech. This is when Will walks up. He goes, where are you, he goes, where are you staying? Where are you staying? Like, I said, Aria. He, he goes, I'll be there. Yeah. He's I'll like, well, there. let me make a couple calls. <laughs> he goes, let me make a couple calls. You know what, better yet, let's get dinner. <clears throat> So he gets on his phone. He disappears. I'm fucking scared for my life. We do the fucking Friday, five minute thing. We finish fucking Friday. And I literally say to Will, hey, <laughs> the whole time we were doing that, I was not present. So, cause I was so focused on what Dana just said to that me. And I'm, I'm low key scared. While I'm finishing that sentence, he walks back up because Red Rocks tonight. We're going to go, you guys like Thai food? Will chimes in. I love Thai food. He goes, I'm going to blow your dick off. His <laughs> words, that's what fucking Dana said. I'm going to blow your dick off. So now... <laughs> I'm kind of freaking out. We're kind of have a bit of a deal. We go through a little more of they're giving us a tour at the uh, PI, which is the Performance Institute. We head over to Apex where they're going to film the power slap and everything. And Dana's there. Mark Wahlberg is there. The power slap guys are there. And our king is on his way. I pulled Dana aside again and go, hey, let me just tell you real quick. I don't really gamble like that. So what's the deal? Like you and I sit down together. He goes, no, 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 no. You're going to gamble by yourself. The odds are better. Blah, blah, blah. Starts really just telling me like, how this game's going to work. He goes, you got to figure out your number. What do you want to win? We're going after that. And we fucking ride. He goes, we're going to war. You and I are going to war against these people. And we're taking everything they have. Gives me this fucking David Goggins, Jocko Willing, like Joe Rogan type of motivational speech where I'm fired up. But the fear is also overwhelming the fired upness. I'm yeah, because he's like, he's like, he's like, you're betting big. Like it's all going to happen within 10 minutes. Like yeah. we're not going to sit there. And you're going to bleed your money. Like, he's like, that's what happens. He's like, you're, we're going in there to fucking win. So you yeah. got to bet big. And he's like, kind of giving me the breakdown before I could even finish. He goes, there he is. And around the corner, <clears throat> literally the oxygen was sucked out of the room as if we were in some sort of vacuum. Just the pressure in the room around the corner comes him as Bula. This man waddles his way up the stairs onto the stage of the power slap league where the power slap finale will be filmed where there will be a belt given to these individuals. We got a band of misfits in the corner who are fighting for a $10,000 purse. And he stands there. No one says a whole lot. And it's just him. Doesn't speak a lick of English. Has Bula. And he's just looking at everybody with the confidence only a God would have. Mark Wahlberg walks up to him, hits him with an Asalaamu Alaikum, which I thought was very smooth. Then as Bula, we, start to watch Hezbollah as they picked him up and put him on a chair to slap all the power slap guys over and over. It was an electric time. Now, that evening, we go to dinner. It's a great time. We got the bus and crew. We got Dana and his crew. It's a long table. Food's flying out. 
don't like to use this, don't like to say this a lot. It is the best Thai food I've ever had in my entire life. It was fantastic. As dinner's ending, he goes, You ready? I look back. I'm like, Uh, yeah. And he we start walking. Our whole crew, we've got about 10 people rolling with us. We walk at the um the the restaurant we're eating in is in the is in the Red Rocks. We walk out the restaurant doors. Waiting for me are two gentlemen in suits. One man named Joe, bald head, full beard. Great personality, a smile on his face. Mr. Lawan, great to see you. We've been texting. If you would follow me, please. We walk, take a hard left into the high roller room. I think to myself, okay, public area, very well lit. I'm going to be okay. We go past the high roller room through doors. In there, in there, there are two tables. I turn to my right. There are five people standing there. Don't know their names. And at that point in time, I was not interested in knowing any of their names. From then on, I bet by myself, and I will wait until this video comes out for the rest of you to see it. But my God, was it one of the scariest and most exhilarating experiences of my entire life? It was nuts. It was wild, bro. It was nuts. We were getting hyper. Like, oh, fuck. Hey, hey, stop. Count that again. Count that. You know how it is in Blackjack. They start flipping that them cards. Yeah. They start flipping them cards. They grab my man's chips and pull it in. I go, hey, hey, hey. Got those numbers again. Some don't look right. Like, oh, it's, it's 22. I was like, all right. All right. We lost that one. We lost that one. Hey, bounce back, though. I'll You'll tell see you what. The vlog. I gambled for incredible. about 15 minutes. Dana gambled for about three and a half hours. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I had to chime in and get the Uber. I was like, hey, it's time to go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. My body, my low back was hurting at that point. I was UFC. sore as fuck. My, uh, my bicep, the bottom half of my bicep is still sore as fuck. From slapping from the From slapping the pad, from throwing the right hooks at the pad. Damn. And then like uh, uh, Paul Craig, PC, he was uh, showing the old, you know, throwing your hips in for the over-under. Something in my low back. I did when you guys kind of caught a little bit. You know what I mean? Looks, uh, it feels like it, it looks smooth because everybody's like, oh, you look cool doing it. And I was like, fuck, man, I'm in. I think something happened. When you, the first time I had hurt my back bad was when we were fucking cockfighting in the pool. Yeah. The, uh, the you know. Last summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When and you bodied me. Yeah, you and that's when you know you were fucking. A beefy boy. Yeah, you were a beefy boy and I was fucking hurt. And it was kind of like the same movement. And I felt something. So I was, in, I was in a lot of pain. Like I woke up the next morning like, fuck. Yeah. It was a bit of a I had to, get, had to get some stretching going on. When you were doing that with, uh, is it Paul Craig? Paul Craig. Paul Craig. I, um, I saw you using the low back and stuff, and I thought to myself, man, my boy might be in trouble because I know it's been a recurring issue for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's like when it gets slightly a bit healthy, mm. I bust my nut, and I start just going crazy about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, of course, I put myself down again, and that's usually, that's, that's the cycle. That's a vicious cycle. It's like, oh, I'm healthy. I'm good to go. Boom, something happens. Now, I, I don't know if we should go into Vegas any, anymore. We have a lot vlogs coming out that you guys are going to be able to enjoy to get more of a visual experience on YouTube. Um, would you like to transition? Maybe some NFL news or even shout we out. We can do that. Break. But before we do, tomorrow, you're listening to this on Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, we will be at Tin Roof in Columbia, South Carolina. And there's still tickets available. If you are, well, what were we laughing at? Just Jack over there. Just clapping. There's still tickets available. Like, all of our tickets are up. All of them are live. Every school we're going to, Ohio State, Texas, uh, LSU. Colorado, LSU, all the tickets should be available on the site. There'll be a link in the bio or a link in the description that you can click on. Buy those up. We will be there tomorrow bringing the fucking noise. The fucking yeah, noise. We can, uh, we can transition to some NFL news because there's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of shit happening right now. First off the top of my head in NFL news, Jalen Ramsey has been traded from the L.A. Rams to the Miami Dolphins. A lot of people are saying that L.A. got the shaft on that deal. Your thoughts, William? Can you bring up, can you bring up what? Uh, it's a third round and a tight end. I think, like, if, my, if L.A. was trying to trade Jalen, right, you kind of get an idea what the market was for Jalen. It was a third round pick and then a tight end that everybody's out there chirping. But yeah, everybody, everybody, the assumption is that LA lost a deal. Like at the end of the day, it seems like they were trying to offload uh, Jalen so that they, that way they could get some draft capital and maybe potentially, I guess, fill a need for uh, a tight end. Um, my thoughts are like, you know, I think, 
I think you see the name Jalen Ramsey and you just think, boom, they just got the most, they got one of the best corners in the game. Yeah, Jalen can still very much be one of the best corners in the game, but he had a very uh, up and down year. One of my favorite players to watch in the game. Mm. His physicality, the dog that he has in him when he's trying to violently hit guys, jump routes and everything else. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. He's going to be, Mitch, you made up a good point earlier. He's going to be the two corner behind, who is it, Xavier? Xavier Howard, that's right. I hate that. I said Xavier. No disrespect, Xavier. Xavier Howard, who is a dog in Miami. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it seemed like they were trying to offload Jalen. And if that's the market for Jalen, then it's like, hey, we're going to get what we can as his way on. Because it's not like Jalen, a player like Jalen, I don't mean this disrespectfully. It's not like he's going to continue to ascend and be the corner that he once was. Like, corners, I feel like it's one of those things, like, once you, you have more of a shorter window of that greatness. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think Jalen will continue to be the corner that he was as he won the Super Bowl. Because when you're Jalen, it's you think this. You got a massive bag. Then you get paid twice, even with uh, L.A. You get two fat bags. You've won a Super Bowl. You are an all-pro corner. You've won all there is to win. You're a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and, and you made it more of a – you built on your brand even more out in L.A. Now you're going to Miami, like – he loves the idea of this stuff off the field, in my opinion, to where it's like, I don't think he will be that dog that everyone thinks that he is getting uh, to kind of say, like, he's on the back nine of his career. He's probably on the back nine of his career. I could probably agree with you on that. But a third round pick, and it was a Hunter Long. No disrespect to Hunter Long. I don't, I don't know who Hunter Long is. I, I'm not even trying to, I'm not trying to be rude, but like a third round pick for a guy that is still a Pro Bowl corner in the NFL, like, it seems like Miami is trying to put the pieces together the way that the LA Rams did a few years ago. Now we're seeing the repercussions for the Rams actions because they go, they spend all their draft capital. Mm. They go get a bunch of players, their cap super high. They offloaded a little bit of that paying, uh, getting rid of Jalen Ramsey and sending him over to Miami. But if I'm an LA Rams fan, I'm not the most optimistic individual going into this next season. Unless they do some big things in free agency, they can restructure a couple of guys. Like we talked about last week in the cap, to make sure that they can be a team that is going to fight for another NFC West championship. It's going to be really fucking hard in that division. Because, yeah, you got the Niners, shout out Bloss, dude, and the uh, Seattle studs. Arizona is a absolute fucking dumpster fire right now, but who knows what's going to happen with that. Maybe that quote that uh, Beecham gave this uh, earlier this week, maybe Kyler Murray does grow up. Cardinals don't have a fucking chance. They don't have a shot, boys. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a big Arizona guy. We grew up in Arizona. Cardinals don't have a fucking 49ers, chance. Seahawks. That's what the NFC West is going to come down to. And also, when I say back nine and talking about Jalen Ramsey, like Jalen Ramsey's back nine is still a Pro Bowl caliber player. Yeah. I think they're also doing, doing solid on Jalen sending him to a place in a contender like Miami. I know like when you are that prominent of a player, it's good to see. It's like when there were rumors and talks of maybe essentially trading Derrick Henry from the Titans. You'd almost hope the Titans do right by him by sending him off to somewhere where you can right. potentially win a Super Bowl. And Miami can compete in that world. And now that they have Howard and Jalen being the two guy, like they have two top dogs, two arguably top what? Top 10 corners? Yeah, they're, they're probably the best corner duo in the NFL. I, and that's off the top of the head. I'd I have, was going to say, that is all. I, I know that's off the top. Think. That is off the top. But you got two big name guys like that. And I could now I could be that fan that's feeding into the names. Yeah. And there's like two duos out there that are absolutely that's murdering the game. Sexiest duo. That's the se sexiest duo, no by question. Far, but by a couple far. of good looking guys. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, he very is. Handsome. They are, yeah, you're very handsome. Very handsome. But I'm saying, fellas. even on paper, you see those names. Again, Jalen Ramsey, it still gives, it still packs the same punch. Like everyone just thinks, like, oh, fucking Jalen Ramsey, he's the best in the game. They are like the sexiest names on paper. Yeah, Spe team. speaking of uh, sexy names, the Kelsey brothers. Travis obviously hosted SNL a couple weeks ago, did a phenomenal job on that, especially in his monologue. Jason Kelsey has said, I have put much thought into whether it makes sense to play another season. After talking it over with my wife and other friends and family, I have decided to return for another year. Thank you to all my supporters and tractors. Detractors. Detractors for fueling me. I ain't fucking done yet. Jason Kelsey's fucking coming back, dude. He's fucking back. I think football is better with fucking Jason Kelsey. It really dude. is, dude. He just fucking seems like a massive leader. He always has great quotes. He knows what to say. They have an outstanding podcast in New Heights. The Kelsey brothers truly are living their best lives right now. Hopefully, I really, I kind of want the Eagles to win the Super Bowl next year for, just because of Jason Kelsey. Like, that is the kind of respect I have for that man. I know he's already got one. 
His brother's got two. Maybe he can even even the score in this 2023 season. But that is a big deal for the Philadelphia Eagles and their leadership in that locker room, dude. Because he just seems like a dude that is truly one of those fucking guys. Yeah, I thought he. I thought he'd go out. I thought he'd retire. I religiously thought yep. he'd retire. I bet. I I really think if they would have won, he would have retired. Yeah, because you go out on top like that. You know how it is, though, man. You get there, and then next year you're like, "Hey, we'll be back." And we'll it is back. a tough motherfucker you, to get yeah. back. Even it, like even being uh uh being competitive in the playoffs, like it's a hard fucking thing to do, man. Yeah. Really, just because you go to the playoffs one year, don't mean you go back the next year. Now Philly is a, a really good uh, football stacked. team, but all it takes is one injury, right? You get hurt, hurts gets hurt, or AJ. And I'm not putting the demons on the, those boys at all, but they are those caliber of players of when they get hurt, massive implications happen to another NFL team. Their NFL team. It is one of those deals. This league is built to be an eight and eight uh, league now, nine and eight or eight and nine, given the seventeenth uh, game. But brother, like they have some fucking building blocks. They have a great defense. They have a stacked offense. Their offensive line is elite. Brother, if you're talking about doing right by Derrick Henry, imagine Derrick Henry in that backfield. Brother, imagine Derrick Henry in that fucking backfield. This is every Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders is a stud. Derrick Henry is a fucking unit. Now, I don't know if he'd do very well in the Eagles offense because Derrick's one of those dudes, the more you give him touches, the better he gets. But fuck, dude, just seeing that house in the backfield, God damn, that would be so terrifying. And the Eagles, are, I feel like, are more of an RPO type offense because yeah. you have Jalen Hurts, who's a, who's a weapon. And you see Derrick mostly in his career is in like your classic I formation or him right behind the quarterback type stuff, RPO. He's not really going to turn his shoulders away from the line of scrimmage, then back in. I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying, based on his last seven years in the NFL, that hasn't been something that he has done consistently. Yeah. Well, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but Miami, going back to Miami, dude, they they could be contenders, absolutely. We got to figure out, because I heard rumblings, they're talking about wanting a quarterback in free agency. It would. I didn't know the Miami stuff. Like, just right now with their roster with two and how they played last year, and then you got Coach uh, McDaniels who's running that. Like, they're going to be a good team. They're going to be a good you ball add, Again, you added Jalen Ramsey. They have a good defense. Uh, they're going to keep building on that good defense now. But, uh, but yeah, they are. A, they, they have weapons on offense with Tyreek Hill. Who's, who's uh, yeah, Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. They, like, combined. They're, like, you know, arguably the best duo, receiver duo in the game. Uh, but it will be. I did not know that, that they're kind of looking to – Wheel and deal in free agency. Yeah, and it's just rumor mills, right? Everyone's fucking over over analyzing everything right now in March and figuring it all out. Free agency starts. That's what that's what tomorrow, we're here for, right? Yeah, it's the tampering period now. Yeah, we'll get to see what happens with Big Jeff. You see, uh, Deron Payne, he just got paid. That's gonna set up the uh, that's gonna set up the D tackle market, which is, you know, I feel like is gonna be expensive this year if teams want to keep all their guys like Quinn and Williams. Um, who are some other big time D tackles? That are no, not available. That teams in their first teams are going to look to extend their own guys. You I got think Big Williams is only year three, right? Right, but so you never know gonna... some of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Chris Jones just got paid, but the best thing to happen to Jeffrey Simmons is who was the individual that got Deron Payne? He's, Deron he's Payne looking at twenty three a year, yeah. maybe. And, yeah, twenty two I mean, and a half, twenty three a year. So that just bumped up what Jeffrey Simmons is now worth. Yeah, and it happened the same way that we discussed on this ep on this show, of guys getting paid. Deron Payne, young cat, very talented individual, and he he reset the market. Besides Aaron Donald, and that's just we we talked about. You got a fucking unicorn out there. That's it's an easy thing for other teams to argue against agents. It's like yes, Jeffrey Simmons might be as good as Aaron Donald is now. We could even argue that he's better. He's getting he's you're going into year ten. We don't know, like, he didn't have the best year last year, and Jeffrey Simmons continues to make that climb. However, look at what Aaron Donald did in his first four seasons as an NFL football player. Like, we're talking about, I think he had a defensive player of the year. He was definitely Pro Bowl all four years. He had a couple all pros in there. It's some wild fucking shit that that man was able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. So it's easy for those teams to argue that. But the, is it Deron Payne? Deron Payne, yeah. Deron Payne being able to have this contract four years, 90 million, Definitely puts Jeffrey Simmons in a great position to probably get something similar to that. I would assume it'd probably be a four year, 95 million or something like that. When, and when you're Jeff, this is like, this is, you know, patience is on your side because you have somebody out here like Duran who gets paid first. It helps right. kind of solidify that floor or whatever they're out there trying to negotiate right now. But that's uh, yeah, I think it's good for, um, for big Jeff. Now, one thing you did bring up that I, I don't think we're going to see in free agency is you say we find out a little bit more about Jeffrey Simmons. I don't think we're going to find out anything about Jeffrey Simmons until we're close to camp. 
I think you're looking at late July, early August, probably at the at the earliest. You talking about because he's under contract for another? He's under year. contract. They picked up his fifth year option based on contract experience of how the Titans do things. Now, obviously, there's a new GM in there. They probably won't offer, or they probably did offer Jeff something last year because he was, you know, doing the whole sit out, not sit out thing during OTAs where he was there, he was available, but he wasn't practicing type thing. But the way, if you look at history of teams, you can find out when guys are going to get paid. They sometimes they renegotiate in year three, going into year four. Some guys wait till four, going into five. Those types of things is a lot. There's a lot more wiggle room when it comes to the first round picks because you know you have the franchise tags and the fifth year option. Mm -hmm. So guys can go like Kirk Cousins did seven years without getting a second like long term guaranteed contract. Right, 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 right. But it, it's it's all. I feel like it's all different with the end of it. Like yeah, time is on the side of it. Really, it's on the side. It's, it's both sides have time, but you look at it as a team, you do have the fifth year option. You can kind of sit on that. It's more of like, hey, you don't want to piss the player off because mm -hmm. Jeff seems to be posturing with deleting everything off of uh, the social medias. Playing the game. Kind of playing that game, you know, within the game, similar to like the A.J. Brown uh, incident last year. So you could be looking at a situation. You know, you don't know what's being said on the, over the phone and behind closed doors, but like, hey, we want to get something done by this date. Or you know, you could fracture the relationship with the player. Like when you got when you got somebody like when Kirk's going from tag to tag and he's still showing up to everything, like there's just that, you know, it's well, hey, player like speaking to the player, what does the player want to do? And it's different when you're a quarterback too. Like you gotta be in there, you gotta have the leadership stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, kind of like different. It's like again, do you want to, you know, play the I'm I'm gonna go silent, I'm not gonna show up to anything. Like it's all I think it's all dependent. It all depends from situation to situation for a guy. And I think with the way Jeff is posturing, it seems like, hey, well, I don't want to wait until fucking camp or X, Y, and Z. Like, I want to get something. I want my money now. Yeah, I mean, patience is the best thing for Jeffrey Simmons right now. If I'm, if based on the way Jeff is going, it's really seeming like he's not going to show up for OTAs. He's going to, he should be there at mandatory minicamp. Your boy tried to miss mandatory minicamp, missed out on $90,000. Mm -hmm. So probably should go to that, Jeff. Just letting you know, they don't give it back to you. I even asked John. He said, absolutely not. And then get into camp and see what happens, man. Um, but I think if he's anywhere close to a contract going into camp, you do the whole, hey, I'll practice. Because you don't want to go into, go into camp, practice, get hurt. You're fucked then. You're fucking yourselves. Mm -hmm. If he goes into camp, they're working on a deal, and they're somewhat getting close to what he thinks, you just tell them, hey, I'm at camp. I'm going to go to meetings, but I'm not going to practice until this deal's done. Right, right. And then that way, can't get fined for not being there, but you're also putting your foot down knowing that, hey, listen, I need to get paid because I'm looking, you got to look out for yourself in that situation. When you're that close, rolls an ankle, something happens, God forbid. I mean, brother, that's a lot of money you're throwing out the window if you, if you do something like that. Yeah, he's definitely, that's, that's the right way to look at it. I mean, yeah, you hurt yourself. You're just, all you're doing is hurting your own position, your yeah. own situation. But you do, you show up, you do all the things to where you can still be around the guy, still be in the camaraderie, all that kind of stuff build those relationships going into the season, but being like, no, I'm not fucking playing until we get something done. Right. Is the, the best way to go about it as in the player's shoes, selfishly. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how far Jeff wants to take this thing. If the deal doesn't get done, we could, I mean, speaking out of both sides of my mouth, we could see something like AJ last year where you're in the, you're to the first round and all of a sudden a big trade happens and yeah. Jeff is somewhere else. And uh, if, I mean, if that happens, I feel like there's just going to, it's going to be, Tough. It'll be tough. I don't, for think Nashville. I don't think they're letting Big Jeff leave. Yeah, I mean, as much as Brable loves Jeff, dude, it's fucking. T I mean, I, I can't see that happening. Should we hit another ad before we go to? Uh, do we? Is there any more NFL news we need to talk about? Shout out the boy Amir resigning with the Raiders. But yeah, always, always got to shout out the boys. Um, yeah, the boy is going into year nine. Going into year nine and looks absolutely incredible. The way mm -hmm. he's like changes his body from college, being just an absolute stud built like a pit bull to now he's got you know, he's got all the you know if you listen to that episode the way he goes about all of his body work and training and breath work and everything else he like he's like transformed his body but yeah shout out to the boy for getting for resigning with the raiders dude shout out to him and shout out to game time dude Created by fans for fans, Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score deals on last-minute tickets. It's possible with Game Time app, the biggest last-minute price drop can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. <clears throat> Me personally, 
I know NASCAR is coming this July to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm, I'm going to use this game time app to get that done <clears throat> because listen, boys, and it's, it's an electric time. If you go to an, uh, a NASCAR thing, it's unbelievable. The purchase process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text. So you, so you can get into the game seamlessly. Get the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code BUSSIN. That's a big deal, boys. You're going to go to the website or the app. You're going to enter your email, and when it gives you the redeem code, you're going to type in BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. That being said, we go to Shadow Note for Shadow of the Week. Yeah, let's go to Shadow Note for Shadow of the Week. Mm. The big time blast. It, 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 and it, uh, you know, pay respects. Like it's it's comedy week for the boys. We're rolling out some comedians this week. We yeah, got, absolutely. We got Bird and Shane. We got Brian Kellen on Thursday. It's gonna be a fucking awesome week. And everybody who's been subscribing, who's uh, I hope you guys are all enjoying the uh, twice a week episodes going on right now. Now we get into the spring tour. We're gonna have I don't know how many episodes up, but we'll be releasing all the following interviews that we do at the campus location that next week early next week on monday and tuesday so if you're gonna look at that the boys are fucking we're spewing out content left and right bro ripping it boys we're doing it for you please do what will said subscribe unsubscribe resubscribe the boys in the back have a lot of work ahead of them yes. have a lot of work ahead of them it's going to be outstanding though they do a phenomenal job boss get on that mic brother fucking have some confidence behind that voice let's see what we got yeah my shout out this week uh, goes to something that I'm not sure when we exactly went away from it um, or when they just kind of like, I guess, stopped doing it inside bathrooms. But I went to a friend's house this weekend, helped them with some remodeling. And when I went in the bathroom, I, <laughs> I noticed that this toilet seat had a, had a padded cover on it. Hmm. I hadn't seen that in quite some time, but I went in there. I had, I had to go. I sat on it. And it reminded me how comfortable this is and why... Why did we ever decide to go away from it? But might need to bring that back. So my shout out, no free shout out, goes to the padded toilet seat. Hmm. Interesting take. Very 70s of your friends. Very 70s. I like it. Jackie, what you got? Um, nothing crazy this week. Just going along the lines of what's on the schedule. Shout out, no free shout out to the spring tour. Feel like we've been working hard, building up to it. We got six stops coming up the next six weeks. It's going to be electric, live shows, hanging out with coaches, interviewing players. Um, I'm excited to be traveling with the boys. Um, check out a couple of new spots I've never been, especially LSU. That one's high on the list. We've talked about it. But, yeah, shout out and a free shout out to the spring tour. It's going to be a fucking time. If you haven't gotten tickets, they're selling out fast, so you better get in there. Mm, tell them. Fast is relative. Mitch. Uh, my shout out and a free shout out this week goes to, I mean, as everybody knows, I'm a PB&J guy. Every every everyone lunch. knows that. Yeah, I, everyone knows that. If you don't, everyone, everyone knows that I'm a PB and J. If you know Mitch, you know he loves PB and J. The first thing I learned about Mitch when he was sitting in that chair was PB and J guy. Yeah, he is. So That's why they call him PB and J? Yeah, and I, and it's a it's a thing that can ha can happen with every sandwich, but it's that one bite that you like kind of eat around, and it's the center and has all the the, the ingredients in it. Like for me, it's the PB and J. Mm. There's nothing but peanut butter and jelly. For like, say, it's like a ham and cheese or whatever. Jersey Mike's sub or whatever, no free shout out to Jersey Mike's, but it's that one bite that you save and it's in the middle and has everything, mm. good stuff, and, and you take that bite and it's the best bite of the sandwich. Oh yeah, big uncrustable guy. Yep, my shout out goes to that. All right, you bite down on that bread and the, all the ingredients just kind of just like pour out into your mouth, just nut your mouth. Hell yeah, dude! Nothing like a good little fucking taste nut in your mouth from a sandwich. William, my shout out, no free shout out this week's gonna go to the bidet. We were in Vegas. We had a nice room. We had a bidet on the toilet. And uh, it's always an absolute pr pleasure getting that butthole sprayed by the bidet. When that thing starts oscillating and giving your asshole a little swirly, it's like you think to yourself, yo, I'm in the butt play because of a bidet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, you do. It's like at first, you know, you like your asshole kind of squeezed together and you kind of just start giggling to yourself when the door's closed. But then you kind of relax a little bit and you're like, this is kind of nice. You're kind of like moving front and back a little bit. Yeah. Like, Fuck, yeah. I can kind of see what gets down here. Uh, and then it's got the dryer for you, dry it up a little bit, and then you wipe and realize there's not a whole lot there, dude. And then you just, you know, 
But my shout out, no free shout out goes to the bidet. Dude, shout out the bidet and um, T's and P's to Charo for her husband finding out he's into ass play. So she's going to have to go through something serious there. I put my knees to my head and let it ride. Let it ride, brother. My shout out, no free shout out is taking, it goes to taking a chance and getting through the fear. This weekend, I've obviously done that. I've obviously told you guys about what's happened without the results happening. I was scared for my fucking life. I was nervous, but I took a chance and spoiler, it paid off fucking big. So my shout out, no for shout out goes to taking a chance. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shall we get into this Burton Shane episode? Some uh, two of our favorites always have a great high energy time. Shane is, uh, you know, didn't say a whole lot. Just sat there looking cool as fuck in those shades. Yeah, he looked cool. You know, Bert, just, he's just a storyteller, man. He just, hey, all you got to say is, Bert, welcome to the pod. And then he's the podcast. Then sit back and fucking watch it happen. Shane did a phenomenal job nursing a hangover and having nice, nice little quick one-line hitters in there that made us fucking lose our mind. Yeah. But he's it was the best, man. probably I the best Shane. ending to a podcast we've ever had, too. But they talk about which one of us they... Which one you would want to fuck. Out of Bert and Shane? Mm-hmm. No, out of yeah, Bert, yeah. Shane, and me. No. No, it, it was, was it Shane. Was, we asked them to, like, which one of us. No, no, no. Bert asked Shane who he'd rather fuck, you or me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a fun time. Yeah. And it kind of, that's what leaks over into the Christian McCaffrey pod. Yeah. To be able to piece that together. It's fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Subscribe, rate five stars, leave comments, hit that little ringer bell on YouTube, turn on the notifications for when all the content, the vlogs, the bus scenes, the under the hood, the shorts, the clips, all that stuff drops. Um, but without further ado, big hugs, tiny kisses. Here is Bert and Shane. You done these? No. I, if, I, if I do, I'm, I'm back 100% for the rest of my life. Oh, really? I, man, I, so, like, I was addicted to dip. Yeah. Like, addicted. Addi the second, the first time I put it in my mouth, done so. Loved it. Loved it. I loved everything about it. I still to this day will buy cans of dip and smell them like a fucking serial killer. Really? And it'll bring me back to fucking college. Great memories. If I smell Copenhagen, it reminds me of being a pledge, being a freshman in college. If I smell wintergreen, it reminds me of my summers in college. Like the like mint. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck. If I smell Kodiak, I think of ninth grade. Re that's the first time? First time I had Kodiak. First time you had it? Yeah. Yeah. Zero zero dip experience. Oh really? brother, it's yeah, really it's really something else. Like there's oh, nothing better. Yeah. You get done with the practice. You get done with the practice. The day's been hard. It's a hot summer day, and you sit in your locker drenched in sweat, and you take a big fat lip and you put it in. Dude, you're it's truly Nirvana. Oh man, choose the stuff. It's got like a it's like a dog logo, and it's like ninety nine cents a packet. <laughs> like Stokers? No, dog logo. It's like a dog logo. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you can get tubs of, tubs of tubs of tubs of Stokers like five dollars. Really? It's in like back seat. five cans in one. It's just this big tub. Russ Grimm, Pennsylvania yeah, yeah, yeah. guy, he would do that all the time. Gave him a real bad cough. Lost his leg about two months later. I don't know if that's anything to do with it. Just something to put on your radars though. In case you think about doing Stoker. Red man, really bad. Because like I ran, I randomly. Are we we're rolling? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're we're rolling. Okay. So red man. I was looking for something. I wasn't drinking, but I was look I'm always looking for something. Mm. Like even if it's cutting, like I'm looking for something. If it works for someone, it's got to work for me, right? Anything. Anything. Uh, bulimia, you name it. If it works for someone, it's got to work for me. It's got to yeah. bring joy to you. Yeah. It brings joy to them. So bulimia. Fuck bulimia. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> you bulimia People have a great anything. time when they're yeah, bulimia. bulimia. Anything, dude. They look good. These guys are having a blast. Yeah, they look fantastic. <laughs> Their teeth are fucked up though. Yeah. They have fucked up teeth. And so uh <laughs> So I'm looking to thin my hair out. So I thought I'll start. So I one day I'm at a, a CVS and I go, I have man, I never had a problem with red man. I'll just take some red man. Put red man in my cheek. And the second the nicotine hit me, I went, oh, I'm back. I'm back and I have no control over it. I have oh, no, no control over it. It's the second time that gets you. Uh -huh. First time's the hook. But the second time you're like, all right, I'll do it. I did have a good time last time. I'll do it one more time. Mm -hmm. The thing I hate about nicotine, which I know you guys probably deal with is when you are, when it's not working for you and it's just making your heart race and you're like, this fucking, I don't even, I'm not even enjoying it anymore. Like I've done it four times today and I'm like just going, like I'm looking for something. Yeah, it is a search after you get like kind of used to it a little bit. You're like, fuck man, where is that first, that first moment? First time smoking weed, first time doing anything that maybe you shouldn't do, you may, it might be bad for you. Yeah. You go in there the first time, you're like, holy shit. Yeah. This is what life is really all about.
That is that is really it. The nicotine though. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with the nicotine. You put a couple of these bad boys in there, and there's a bunch of people like uh, Ben Ben Greenfield. You know, you know that's actually that's actually real. Yeah. You know Huberman went on Two Bears One Cave, mm -hmm. and he said, "I'm paraphrasing. Smoking is good for you." Yeah. And I did see you guys try to clip that yeah, the way it is. You know, he, he said nicotine isn't bad for you. It's nicotine. You're, it's all about delivery systems, right? Mm -hmm. So smoking is a delivery system. Uh, fucking Zins are a delivery system. If you're going to have the healthiest way to get nicotine into your body, then it, it does offset, I think, dementia and Parkinson's. Offset. Yeah. Offset. <laughs> Shane walked in, walked into this building, and just like fucking, I he couldn't have had more slump slump yeah, shoulders. Hurt, right? And I go, he puts his, he, bro, he puts his hand up like gentle, like this, like good to see you, bud. Taps me on the hip, right in the love handle. And I'm like, you all right? He goes. I'm a piece of shit, dude. I'm gonna get a water. He kind of walks away. You walk out. You're like, hey, boys, what's going I mean, on? What's well, going? Hey, the words, he took the it, famous he words he was saying last know. night. I think we take it easy tonight. It's oh, been, brother. And every day I've been here, I've been like, all right, I gotta take this one off. No, when we were talking about meeting up, you're like, blacked out. You're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude. Were you hanging out with fucking uh, Chris Long last yeah, night? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty sweet. Fuck yeah, it was, it was Will. Yeah, we made it to the right house. We saw Chris Long, and we were Chris Long just Dorfman one of the best. Dude. He is awesome. <laughs> Dorfman, it was me, him, and Dorfman. Yeah, it was great. It was a good time. Yeah, well, that, there, there was a moment. There was a moment where I was like, I was like, yo, if you're a bro, if you're a bro, you're about to walk into a bro orgy because you got us. KFC, fucking, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was like, did you see the one dude? This is the best. This one kid is like moving beers around the bar, and he's yeah, yeah, saying, yeah. he goes, bro, 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 yeah. you're like my favorite Screaming. fucking comedian, favorite Screaming. fucking comedian. I think Shane says to him, well, you're about to have your mind blown when you see <laughs> him behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just turns around, he sees me, and he starts sprinting laps around the bar going, yeah. shut the fuck up! Yeah. Oh, no I shit. went into the bathroom and saw that kid doing coke. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I went to take a piss. He was like, yo, say, you, you want to do a bump? You want some coke? I was like, no, dude. You said no? Yeah, I said no. Hey. You said no? <laughs> no, I, I said no. I wasn't dude, doing that guy's coke. What that was, a that was fucking mad. time. There's a dude oh. who came up and he goes, Hey, will you call my will you make a video and call my friend a bitch? Yeah. And we were yeah. like, Let's slow down, brother. Did How you do much? it though? He gave me a hundred dollars cash. Oh, so you did it? Yeah, I did it. You still got the cash on you? Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. That's amazing. Damn, I didn't know you did it. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. Oh, hey, we make money out here, bum. We do whatever we gotta do. Hundred dollars, and I was yeah, like, "Yeah." He's like, "I'll do it." And then he like one ripped. He's like, "Oh, don't worry, I got eight more." <laughs> hand me another one. More. Yeah, hand me that. Hey, was damn that. Dollars. Hey. <laughs> don't I got worry a two, about I got a two year old it. that's sick at home. So last night I was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna. I gotta go home. Gotta be a good dad." Uh, I wake up to a 6.30 text. Will's not going to the workout. I'm like, man, it must have been a night. And now I got to sit here and have FOMO. You guys recap an incredible time. Uh, we'll do it tonight. We'll do it. We'll do it. Oh, brother. Sorry. I'm free tonight. Yeah. Huh? Everybody's yeah, like, I'm free tonight. Everybody's like, oh, oh, Bert's here too. And I look over, Bert's like, you know, got a shirt up, taking a photo of somebody wants their shirt up. Everybody's yeah. just having a good time. That hey, patty spot is cool too. Has that become overplayed yet for you? What? To, to other people, everyone wants to take their shirt off. Like the first time we met you, yeah. you walked into the warehouse, we took our shirts off. Yeah, no, I love Every it. Every time you see people, that's never become like, love, ah. By the way, I don't understand the people that don't love all of it. I love all of it. I love getting recognized. I love people liking me. Like it's the greatest fucking feeling in the world. Today, yeah. I go to the fuck, you wanna, you wanna nice. ready? Today, I go to the fucking Radio Row, and the guy goes, a cop being a little bit of a dick, he goes, I said, where's Radio Row? And he goes, it's over there, you're not getting in. I said, why is that? And he goes, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. You need like a VIP pass? And I go, I think I'll be good. And he goes, what? I said, I, I'll be fine. And the three cops working with him lose their fucking shit, and they're like, holy shit, it's the machine! The machine! Yeah. Yeah. Like, What's up, guys? And he's like, so how do you plan on getting on Radio Row? I go, I'm going to show my face. And I just went over. I was like, hey. And they're like, oh, come on in. It's like, I fucking love all of that. All, it, you skip so many fucking boring loopholes in life when you get, when, if someone likes what you do. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, I love Johnny Depp. I love Joaquin Phoenix, all those guys. But the way they just, like, go, like, no, nah, man, I don't want it. I go, what the fuck? Is that how you get pussy? Because that's I don't, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's refreshing because some people really want to act like they don't fucking like it, but how could you not be a little bit of addicted to it? If I get recognized once in a while, I'm I'm fi I'm fired up. Well, it's, it's not even addicted. It's, it's someone saying I like what you do. Mm -hmm. Like I like you. You make me happy. Like why the fuck? Like I watch I, I watch it when it happens to Shane. Of people coming up and going, dude, you're the funniest guy I've ever seen. 
never has Shane been like, please, my space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like fucking, you, you go, oh, thank you, man. Yeah. I'm so glad that I made you happy. Shane, does it make you feel uncomfortable at all? Uh, no. You love it. I, I mean, I wouldn't say I love it. Brother, you, know, you're, hey, you're, you, you love it. You love it because you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to yeah. because it sounds gross when you say I love it. Because then you look like you're a fame whore, and next thing you know, they think you're doing the mass singer. That's not what I'm talking about. Are you doing about. the mass singer? I, fuck no. I think you'd be fantastic. <laughs> I, I like, we we'd like, walk out like they did with fucking Giuliani. <laughs> I feel like we like you remember that? Who the like that? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Not make fun oh. of each other, but we like to lean into it and like oh, somebody sweet. recognizes us. We're like, let's take off yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. panda's mask. <laughs> it's Shane Gillis. No, there's a difference between being famous for the sake of famous and liking being recognized. Yeah. Like liking people. All this is people liking your shit. You What's the difference? Go, like give us a, like how is there a, the contrast of it? What's the difference of it? So like... Liking being famous. Like, uh, so like, um, I'm trying to think of the right example. Bo Burnham actually was said it brilliantly in, a, in a, one of his specials. He was, I'm watching celebrities lip sync. Like what, what kind of fucking mind? That's, I have, this is my time that I'm wasting mm -hmm. of a guy just going lip, not, you're not even doing anything. So it's like, that's like carpool karaoke and all those things. It's like you're doing, or like even sometimes, I mean, like, like the Mass Singer, which I love. The Mass Singer is, I, mean, I guess, I've never seen it, but like Dancing with the Stars, like that's just being in front of the America to be famous, whereas without doing your thing. I only want to do my thing. Like, I want to make people laugh. I want to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I want to do podcasts. I'll do a movie, but like, just like, hey, do you want it? Like, I, I'm here to do this, but this is because it's fun. Yeah, I'm not just like, hey, Bert, do you want to? Like, I've done it. I've done it. I did. I've done like, uh, like celebrity cooking shows or whatever and you realize that you're just you're there's no time you're just like putting your say putting your face in front of something to go like remember this that's different yeah i think i don't uh, know how do, you, how do you like it i don't do anything you're blowing up i don't do anything yeah you are you're blowing, blowing up, up man. Like you're fucking oh thanks you're crushing yeah it. your shit's literally awesome. actually dude this is a funny story so i'm not gonna say who the person is you know this individual okay uh i'm watching the big 10 championship at this individual's house and we're talking about comedians and I go, buddy, you've got to watch Shane Gillis' special in Austin, Texas. He's a fuck. I'm, I start singing your praise. It's hilarious. You're going to love it. He makes fun of special ed kids. He makes hell fun yeah. of uh, racism. Hey, 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 hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, brother. He gives it to all of them. He gives it to everybody. He's really <laughs> You're breaking them down. They've They're like, too good for too long. I, I have sold this. I have sold this dream to these, these individuals. We pop it on. Go to YouTube. They kick it on. Three minutes into it, you're going talking about Fox dads. Yeah. The guy I'm talking, Fox the News guy, dads. Fox News dads. Yeah. The guy who I told to watch this is a Fox News dad. We're sitting there. I'm laughing my ass over the corner. He's not saying a fucking peep. Oh, he thought I was too five, liberal? Five, yeah, five minutes into it, he goes, let's watch something else. And doesn't, doesn't say, hey, do you guys want to watch something else or anything? He turns it off. I talked to him two nights ago. I was like, bro, you got to put it back on. And then I rewatched it again. And then you do the Trump thing about how he, if he gets murdered, like he'd be the funniest guy. Like, nah, he can't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> he just, I can't. Yeah. But that, He's like watching it ahead of time, like, okay. Yeah, like a parent, like a parent for their kid. Like, like, I wonder if Frozen's going to be like the okay for my kids to watch. Like, how much is that? that? Are they too young? That confuses me when dudes are like, you're too liberal. I get that a lot. Do you really? Yeah, I get people like, oh, you fucking pussy. Why are you talking How? shit on Trump? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I'm doing it like the nicest of anybody. Yeah, you're, I would definitely people, not. And then I get in trouble. People are like, he loves Trump or something like that. Yeah. You know? But you, you play it. both sides of the fence. And the I'm thing trying. is about people getting mad about the Trump thing, people who love Trump hate people that get triggered, but they're in turn oh, getting yeah, triggered. It's like, a, it's, a, it's a vicious circle we're dealing it's with. It's like comics who uh, hated Hannah Gadsby, and then, and, but they're edgy comics and they're like, Oh, if you don't like what I say, just turn it off. And you're like, well, you didn't like what she said. Like, <laughs> right. What did, what, what did she say? I, I don't it was, know it was who that fine. is. It was, it was, I mean, it's not, it's not, obviously it wasn't written for me, but I, I liked it. I liked watching it. Yeah. liked it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. There's you condone, jokes. You yeah. condone the thought process? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I yeah. fucking loved it. No, no, no but I like, <laughs> look, hey, you could argue, I mean, you could argue, and this will get me in trouble, but Chappelle's doing something very similar now. To Hannah Gadsby? Yeah, yeah, like doing that destroy comedy and be serious. Okay. You know, like he he does he did the fucking 15 30 minute thing where he just talked and no jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I wish oh, I oh hey, are we getting some water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not doing that. <laughs> I wish I knew, man. I know I got to watch this.
<laughs> what one. I'm gathering is apparently this Hannah chick hates comedy. Yeah. And and yeah. and is a great comic. This and then great, okay, <laughs> who is this? Yeah, this is but you said, you said Dave, you said Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's a great comic. He said out of everything he does. You said Dave Chappelle was Hannah Gatsby. Dude, you said that. You said <laughs> top said five it? all time was Hannah Gatsby. Hannah Gatsby is the, the lesbian Dave Chappelle. You go, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's tough when you don't know what they're talking about. I'm just laughing. I mean, you're, you're laughing. You're yeah. laugh. Exactly. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's fun watching Shane blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all this. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You guys? How's, dude, we're chilling. How's football, dude? dude what's, football what's is up with football? Football is, uh, <laughs> football is about as turbulent. What's going on with football? Football is as turbulent as it could possibly get right now. Yeah, yeah I've played 20 games in three years. Ooh. Yeah, woof. That's all so, right, though. What's that? That's fine. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, me either. I'm kind of just trying to you. figure yeah, out life yeah. right now. But the, the podcasts are great. This yeah. is fantastic. I love doing this. Yeah, the pod life is good. Yeah, pod life's awesome. The, this whole week has been we a fucking crazy deal. NFL, dude. Yeah. Will got banned from the NFL. What? Oh, yeah. You're you didn't hear? What happened? Remember the gambling stuff? Not like actually. Oh, banned. is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. He was going to sign with the Falcons. Yeah. And he, was, he literally drove down to Atlanta. They were going to sign him 15 minutes, no problem. NFL comes back. They want a thousand different things from Will. Yeah. He ends up having to go back to Nashville. Weeks and weeks and weeks go by. Trying Not a whole. Out. Trying to get it figured out. And then eventually it was just like, there's like, what, three weeks left in the season? You're like, oh. fuck it. I don't want to tell your story, but I know we have a limited amount of time. Yeah, they made it as difficult as possible. Just yeah. Probably the Barstool stuff, I would assume. Yeah. But Definitely. I don't fucking know. One of my first texts was to Shane. Like, yeah, he was like, I got it, baby. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, dude, that's yeah. incredible. I was come on my head. Then nothing ever happened. And I was like, on the case race? He's like, Will, it's over, bro. You're one of us now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about like year 10. I was sitting there just blacked out, like, you're not going anywhere, motherfucker. <laughs> Your pants are off and you're blacked out, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. oh my God. Anywhere. Dude, uh, Bert, how was. Amsterdam with the boys with KFC. Was, fucking epic. was it not like fights was telling me it took him like he got back on a Sunday or whatever and like Wednesday he was like, I think I have to go to the hospital. This can't just be yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. something else happened. Yeah, well we I, I put it on him. Like I was like, I'm gonna I wanna I want him I want him to feel it. Like they, but it, I you know, I I I I'm I run at that pace for the whole tour, you know. So it's yeah. I, I, I have my workarounds. I get a nap when I want one and like there's certain like fixes and when i go on stage all the anxiety or whatever if you're not feeling good it just goes away yeah but yeah we got up they came in we started drinking and smoking joints at like nine in the morning and then drank all the way into lunch nine and then in the morning nine in the morning went to the bulldog and everyone lit a joint everyone had a beer we had like four beers there and then just kept it going all day we went and had chinese food we went to a we went to a, a casino and then we ended the night we overdosed on mushrooms like the, hold on, what do you mean about overdose? Crazy. It was we got well, it's not mushrooms over there. It's uh, truffles. It's a like different. It's like psilocybin and true infused truffles. No, it's, they, they can get psilocybin and truffles also. So I guess a mushrooms when it comes out of ground, a truffles when it's under the ground. Yeah, I think I'm not a, a doctor. No, I think you're right. But we spent we spent like hundred and ninety dollars <laughs> on mushrooms, and then everyone had mushrooms. I did not eat mushrooms, and only because I didn't. I didn't want to flip out and then ruin this great trip for them. Mm -hmm. like, I didn't want to like have a moment and then be like, oh, I got to go to my room. But like Mark Smalls, like low, low key overdosed and like had to like go. He was like, I'm going into myself. Feidelberg threw up in the casino. And then, uh, oh, fuck. and then we ended up at the That's banana scary. room having a, it was a fucking blast. It was so much fucking fun. How many days was it? They were there for three. They were there for three. Oh, we I took a, we did a bigger big v uh, venue in Amsterdam. We took a boat on the canal to get there. It was fucking awesome. It was really great. What's been one of your favorite spots to travel internationally? Oh, uh, I don't know. I Australia is pretty sick. I feel like you've been all over this. Australia year. is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Australia is great. Australia is great. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Shane is just a shell of who he was. <laughs> just... How did you get? How did you get so fucked up last night? I drank. <laughs> what time did you get to the house? Yeah, he took that to bump. He took that bump in the bathroom. I don't know. What time did we leave? Uh, uh, Patty's? We yeah. probably left Patty's at No, like... I meant the other bar. What, two in the morning? Yeah. Well, it's okay. not that bad. Not that bad, but I feel like you've been 
you did it a couple yeah. of days in a row. Yeah, I did. When I was texting you, I was like, when's the show and you want to get beers? You're like, oh, man, I'm trying not to. Yeah. And then once I got there, you're like, chug this. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, well, the O-line for the Chiefs rolled in, and you could see Shane. That's like, that's Shane's. Pussy. I love it. I like, love seeing big, I love seeing big boys. Yeah. And he going. Talking, he's showing him his drills. Like, huh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Huh. Oh, yeah, you're getting it? Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Did you, uh, was Orlando Brown there? Yeah. God, is he not the biggest fucking yeah, human being of all time? He's a cool fucking guy. Is he? Oh. Yeah, they were all awesome. He comes in, he texts, DMs me, and he's like, hey, man, I'm trying to roll through with the O-line. Do you think you could, like, get us backstage? And I'm like, and I know she, this is what Shane loves. Yeah. This is, yeah, this this is Shane's wheelhouse. Well, we, yeah. Can you make sure to leave your chicks at the door because yeah. Shane's going to want all of you guys. I'm going to need to see these boys. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I go, yeah. you guys, shoulders a little bit. Where'd, yeah. where'd you play college, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oklahoma, I'm like, that's sick. What years, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's, all, that's fucking you awesome. When we went to Notre Dame. Oh, the yeah. boys. Those are the boys. Those are the Those boys. Those are young yeah. boys, yeah. dude. Yeah. We were yeah when we did the tour we were doing like baseball fields that was fully loaded that was yeah. so sick but we were in South Bend and the O line came out I was like oh I yeah, know you were just locked up the whole time so I remember I was when like, you we were, got Ohio State yeah. Week One dude we were, let's go <laughs> we were doing one in uh, Indianapolis and we, we were trying to get Quentin Nelson to go you're like if we get Quentin dude, here tell him he's, I will, he's tell the number I one I need mean, Quentin you love him like that yeah I'm a big fan. Buddy, after the show, we'll get him on the phone. Right, he he fucking right. he is all fucking time. Well, I'm really just gonna is. be like, hey, Quinn's like he's, he's so dude. quiet. Remember, too. remember when that safety blitz against Georgia and you picked him up and fucking leveled him, dude? <laughs> <laughs> that was so sick. Remember when you choke slammed that guy against LSU in the bowl game? <laughs> dude, you love ball, dude. Orlando, yeah, love ball. Orlando Brown rolls in first. I mean, I'm talking like, like a, I hate to say it's like a but a big like. Sweet dude, big handshake. Thank you so much. So fucking funny. And I see Shane light up. Yeah. He lights well, up. I was like, also wearing my fucking Eagles hat, and I was like, ah, they didn't. Did you take it off? No. You pull like they one of those off real quick. Yeah. They didn't care at all. They were like, yeah. so you guys are boys now. I wouldn't say I'm friends with the Chiefs. I'm... <laughs> 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 but me and the Chiefs are pretty close now. Is it close like, enough to where you're rooting for both teams? No. Like if the Chiefs win, you're gonna be like, hey, my boys did it. No. 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 How do you see this game going? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not – it comes and goes. I think the Eagles – I think the Eagles are going to win. I think the Eagles are going to win, too. I think the Eagles are going to win. I think the Eagles are going to win by 10 points. saying that. Huh? Everybody's saying they think the Eagles are going to win. Yeah, and that's like the worst thing that's you can do to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. yeah. The worst thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Pat is – dude, did you watch the AFC Championship game? Uh, Chiefs, oh. Bengals. Yes, I did. We were, and we were on our bus, and we were watching it driving through the Scottish countryside. Yeah. God, that sounds like a that was yeah. That's magical. Double decker bus, double decker bus, just fucking rolling those pictures. I was like, that's unbelievable. Good one. But the game really didn't even happen on Sunday. The game happened Monday through Saturday. The mayor of Cincinnati does this like press conference where he needs uh, Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes to do a paternity test to make sure that uh, Joe Burrow isn't Patrick Mahomes' dad. (laughs) The whole city is basically trashing Kansas City the whole time because in the beginning of the week I was like, Bengals are going to win. They're a better team. Yeah. They just put it on the Bills. It's going to be over. They started doing that by Friday afternoon. I was like, Chiefs are going to win this game. And that's and that's that's just that. And they fucking did. Mahomes is hobbling on an ankle. He loses all three of his receivers. The whole world is against Patrick Mahomes, and he fucking wins it. And I feel like that's kind of happening here at the yeah, Eagles. The they're... Eagles are a better football team. They're a better football team through and through. But, man, Pat Mahomes is really him. It really yeah, comes is. down for us, where can we sell more tickets? Yeah. And Philly's where it is. Yeah. You can sell some legit tickets in Philly. Fucking Philly fans Philly's go crazy. Land, dude. Yeah, I like it. I remember when uh, we, you know, <laughs> I suck at this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Brother, yeah, yeah, I like it. You, you know that, like, what makes you enjoyable on podcasts no. is that you do not turn it on. Yeah. Or just you. <laughs> Like, I can be annoying on podcasts, so like, stop fucking laughing. But, like, you were just nah, like... No, your laugh's very nice. Your laugh is... He's like, he's like your laugh's very he's nice. He's like, man, I just feel like this is gay. And then he'll just start going in <laughs> no. on it. I'll just start going in on it. No. <laughs> guys, stop. But you're doing an amazing job. I'm doing You're great. doing fantastic you're right like, now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're from Philly. I was like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> that's, that's crazy how bad that is. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever uh, thrown up on a child at a football game? Yeah. No, that guy did that at the, the Phillies game. That was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you ever you hear that story? No. A uh, guy and his kid were in front of these Phillies fans, and they were like, I guess, talking shit back and forth, and a guy made himself throw up on the guy's kid. Oh, my God. Yeah. A Philly fan did that. Yes. That's the Philly way. That's the like pole. the nastiest thing of all time, dude. Philly, Philly's got to be like the skeeziest fans. Did you hear my joke about that last night? No. 
I go, who are you guys rooting for to win the game? And it was predominantly, overwhelmingly Philadelphia. And you see a few Chiefs fans like, Chiefs, go Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you're afraid to talk up, afraid someone's going to throw up on your <laughs> oh, no and shit. light your hair on fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys are the most savage fan base. They're, they're terrible, dude. Are none. I was, I was with uh, Michael Che, and we were talking about going to the Niners Eagles NFC Championship, and he's a Niners fan. He was like, I'm going. I was like, dude, Ooh, do not go. That would be a bad move. Hey, don't fucking wear Niners gear if you go. There's going to be 10,000, like, 20-year-old white dudes just literally spitting on you fucking, and then they're going to find out you're from SNL. Oh, and then gonna, it's over. They're going to see you're black. <laughs> you're going to go nuts, dude. <laughs> you're going to have to fight. Yeah, they're going to, wait a second, this son of a bitch is black? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, dude! Do you, hey, do you feel like you would have handled the? You feel like you wish you were the one holding the camera for the Joey Bosa situation? Did you see uh, that video? Yeah, Bosa. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Bosa has the perfect Philly last name. Oh, wait, that was that, yeah. dude? was yeah. that the dude who's standing in the thing and his chick's like, "Come on, let's go inside. Let's yeah. go inside." Yeah. He's, like, he's like, "I'm rich, bitch." Yeah, yeah. he's like, "I'm rich." Like, you oh. feel me for little butt buddies on Snapchat? Yeah, he's yeah. the man, though. Dude, he, like they're awesome. He, the Bosa he brothers have like this cool caveman dude. vibe to them. Yeah. They don't really talk a whole lot. They play video games and it seems like they smoke a bunch it's of weed. It's unfortunate that he ran into just fucking gremlins, just like, Bosa, <laughs> you fucking loser. <laughs> it's so, it had to be so frustrating. You can't, oh, you he's like, that. you're a loser. Wait a second. It seems like he was triggered from the get go, though. That video Definitely. started, he can tell he's already been through it. Like, just yeah. getting to where he was was, it was like hell. The hyenas were attacking the lion. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the lion was like, I'll fight back. And you go, no, if you focus on one, they get your back paws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. He's on your tail. He's on your tail. And then the other lion was like, just walk inside. Just plumbers coming out just on perks. Just, just, like, just a yeah. bunch of plumbers, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they're all on perks, dude. It's they're, unbelievable. They're, they're, Those tailgates they're, are they're, fucking They're like egging gross, fans. Dude. Throwing eggs yeah. at them. Yeah. Dude, my, my whole family's from Philly. My whole fucking family's from Philly. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got like I think 40 or 50 cousins that live in Philly. My not, I got you eight uncles. No, you no. fucking Amish? You got 50 yeah. cousins? I got more than that, I think. My actually. entire family's from Philly. Oh, my mom's one cousins. of nine, and then each oh, of wow. her brothers, and each of her brothers, they're all brothers, they all have at least five kids. And so it's like fucking, we're thick in Philly. And so, yeah, thick. like my dad went to Malvern. My mom oh, went wow. to, my mom grew up on the main line right across from Valley Forge Military. And so all growing up, I was an Eagles fan, die hard. Harold Carl, Carl, Carl Michael was like my favorite. Ron Jaworski, I was an Eagles and Bucks. B Doug Williams was my guy. I was Eagles and Bucks. Eagles and Bucks, man. Yeah. When I was a kid, when the when the I Bucks, Notre Dame, the Bucks got. I mean, college, obviously Notre Dame. Uh, fucking crazy. What? <laughs> Come on, man. You know how football works. Crazy. <laughs> Come on, man. Wait, do you go, do you root for the do you root for your teams where you played college, right? Oh, what do you mean? You, the, you, the, yeah. Those are the games you watch. When I was in college. When you no no now. Oh yeah yeah hundred yeah, yeah. percent now absolutely. I, like, I watched Florida State. Oh the yeah. last time I was on I yeah, said Clemson was better State. than Michigan. My bad. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong on that. Oh yeah okay good. Yeah. My bad. All right good. I started rooting for my. I was on Adderall. My face was dark red. That dude watched. That. You guys have hit me with the worst. <laughs> like first time I was in Boston with a boy. You said it when you saw me. You were like, God damn, you look. He was like, I thought you were gonna be a hundred pounds bigger. I saw you on Boston with the boys. <laughs> he saw me like a week before on Boston just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah camera angles, angle. Yeah, the camera it's angle. Insane, but we got to look good ourselves. And then me and him did the one at Notre Dame. I, and I had FOMO My during that. Bright red. I was fucking hammered. Dude. I hate when the lighting's bad and your face is red. It was super like, red. I'm going to have a stroke any minute now. Yeah, yeah all the time, yeah. dude. Uh, and you then know, you, I wanted to like I want, sometimes like when you do like Joe DeRosa's podcast, he's his lighting's really red and the room's red, and I I look red and I go. So the alternative is I roll in with hair and makeup, which I can afford, and I do if I do television. I can do hair and makeup, and if you found that out, you think I was a phony. But I come in hungover as fuck, yeah. blood pressure high, red <laughs> as fuck, and you're gonna light me up in the comments. Just fucking listen to it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like fucking both right now. <laughs> 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 you butt buddies? Yeah. Butt buddies, dude. yeah, that's uh Oh dude. Yeah, I was fucked up just yapping about college football. That's awesome. I gave out some bad takes. <laughs> some yeah. Bad takes. They were enjoyable takes. Yeah, thanks. I, I yeah. had you. You were like, oh, 
I never thought of it like that. I was like, yeah, I know. I'm fucking right. They I'm right right now. They haven't won a natty right. since Hitler. Well, that's true. They haven't won a natty since Hitler. Who's that? Michigan. Go Blue. Brother. We won one in 97. Half, that's dude. Debatable. All right, best, best college football game to go to. If you're going to go to a fucking college... Okay, give me one, best team. Best one. team. Best team to go to their stadium to watch them play. And then best game to go to. Like Florida, Florida State, Ohio State, oh, Michigan. Oh, brother. Like I best, would say the best, best stadium. Uh, a whiteout at Penn State at night. Whiteout in Penn State goes is, fucking hard, I've never, dude. I've, I've never really been to when, when Penn State all, Stadium, yeah, Beaver yeah. Stadium. They all wear all white unless it's Halloween, and then everyone's in Halloween costumes, and it's fucking loud. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. This is. I went to. I went to. I was in uh, Oregon, and I went to uh, Eugene. I went to a Ducks game. Loud. Now I, I consider myself a fun guy, but the energy in that stadium. Was fucking bananas. Oregon? Yeah, yeah they do the a Dude, little bit louder loud, now. Yeah. A little bit louder now. Like that kind of shit. A I little bit louder that now. With, and Florida State, when he throws the burning spear into the fucking ground. Yeah, it's crying. Pretty sweet. Bawling, crying. Emotional. Bawling, yeah. fucking it's emotional experience. Crying. It's a big moment. They gave me the fucking spear when I did, do, uh, uh, was, did Donald Trump Tucker Center. Donald Trump who? <laughs> Whatever it's called, the Donald, Donald Trump Center. Donald Trump Center. I did the, I did the civic, uh, I did the arena there, and mm. they come up and sell it out, and they're like, you know, for a sell it, we give you a present, and they gave me the spear. They don't know that I, they don't know the, how emotional I'm attached to that fucking spear. I start crying. I thought they were gonna give me a, a fucking doctorate. <laughs> They were like, we have a special present. I'm like, dude, make me a doctor. Doctor of partying. So they give me the spear. I start bawling, crying. I take that spear. I understand this is a hate crime. I take that spear onto the stage and start fucking, oh, oh, yo. Cancel. Yeah, yeah. Cancel. Pull your phones. Yes. I'm bawling, crying on stage. Bawling, best fucking experience of my life. Whiteout, I'm putting this on bucket list. I'd love to go to a whiteout game. Whiteouts are cool, man. I, I haven't, I wish I'd been to every single I heard LSU is yeah. insane. Really? Yes. It's all about the intros, dude. I'll give, I'll give JP some flowers. Ball. South Carolina played Tennessee. They upset the Tennessee ball. this past fall. Yeah. They're fucking, it was an Sandstorm. electric stadium. Sandstorm was going. Yeah. I heard that song 15 times that yeah. game. Sorry, Jack. Where's Jack? Sorry, Jack. But it's a, it's awesome. Yeah, I wish I, I, we gotta go see them all because I heard LSU. I feel like the Iron Bowl with the Iron Bowl, Alabama. Alabama. I yeah, that would be electric. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan is fantastic. The only knock on Michigan for me is the stadium's not very loud. One hundred fifteen thousand people, and it's not a loud stadium. Why? It's, it's, it's the bowl. It's bowl. It bowls oh, out real. like this. But the same architect did Notre Dame Stadium, yeah. and that shit's loud. It's very weird. Notre, it's, it's, Notre, Dame's, Dame's, Notre Dame is a well, minute. It depends. it depends, bro. When Manta, hey, when Manta Teo's out there, yeah. back in 2011, 2012, that, that was shit me, was dude. loud. You heard me. I was up there. Was you were up there? Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Their intro they had then was insane. Did you feel like it was loud at Notre Dame? I didn't feel like it was like that at Notre Dame when, when, when y'all beat Clemson? Clemson. Yeah. Storm the field? I don't, bro. Over Tennessee? Tennessee? I guess I didn't go to South Carolina. Tennessee's what 105, 105,000 people, right? They take it, they take it personal. They, they are big fans. Tennessee, Ohio State fan, South Carolina, Alabama fan. He's Ohio State, big safe light field guy. Safe big born on, born on third. Safe yeah, light yeah, field. He's, he's, oh, really? fan too. he's like he's like he dick rides the front runners. Yeah. Well, like Garrett, well Garrett does too. A good team. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a good ball club. It's a good ball club. Like they were like undefeated. You just told us you were a fan of Kansas City since they were good. And he loves Ohio State. Yeah, he's from Pennsylvania, and he's like, well, you know, Eagles are my second team. Both my teams are in the Super Bowl. Like, all right, brother. Oh, can I tell you what I'm into? <laughs> what? Have you ever seen? But <laughs> H- 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 yeah. HBCU cheerleaders. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I like it. Right. I like it. Go ahead and work this out. HBC, HBCU cheerleaders, fucking rock. Dude, I liked one of the videos, oh, and then all of a sudden they got into my algorithm, and now all I there, get brother. is fucking <laughs> my algorithm's <laughs> college gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. Like a, it's my insane, algorithm's dude. got Australian sprinters, yeah. Olympic sprinters. Yeah. One girl, one German uh, girl just sprints, and I watch it in slow motion, her legs, and I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck. Yeah, dude, I got my algorithm. <laughs> Dude, Bert, Bert, Bert just jumping. horny on this podcast right now. I got that in there, but HBCU cheerleaders. This is the one I liked, and now they're everywhere. You say you 
want no problems but you talk like you do and the fucking room you say you want no problems but you talk like you do you say you want no problem and then then there's just boom ba boom ba boom ba boom they did one where the girl uh, what is happening right now it's in, a, it's in, a, it's in stands wooden stands with everyone and the girl goes like this uh, 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 uh. and then and then the circle around her the circle around her now this is packed the circle around her is looking at her and then they go uh, uh. and they do the same move and then the whole fucking stands does it. And then they stand up and do it. Yeah. And now it, and I'm going, dude, more of that fucking shit. I want to go to an HBCU, like, like Miss, was it Mississippi State and Grambling? What's the big one that they hold every yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. I want to go to one of those. Competition? That energy, man. That energy, you don't get, like, you don't get that at, like, USF games, it's, you know? Uh, I think it's. I, I, I've Carolina. never seen hey, this. Games. But you, I've never seen it. You just painted an incredible, an incredible picture. Basketball games. I think it's North Carolina yeah. and T. It's insane, dude. Insane. Really? The video is like 12 years old, though. Like it's just, the, it just came back out. Like competitions against each other. No, it's just the whole gym. It's a ba college basketball game. Talk about bring it on. Uh, uh, yeah. Right? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, a little bit like Brandon. Or, or like, do you remember in Drumline when he drummed on the other guys? Oh, hey, you don't do that. Oh, yes. Nick Dude, Cannon. I love that shit. Yeah. I love, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, they're in my algorithm thick. Like, if, if you go on my phone, it's boat launches, it's uh, <laughs> sprinters, it's of women riding horses in slow motion. <laughs> what the fucking fuck? hot it's as not bad. fucking. Yeah. Shit. Bareback in a bikini comes out of the Ooh, woods. Gotta hurt. You see her mouth say it first. Cha! And then the horse looks and goes, you, you have dominion over me. <laughs> and starts running and cuts the corner. Motherfucker. Give me these things in yeah. life. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Give me fuck fucking horny. That horse Dude, one. I'm gonna whack off to the horse. <laughs> give, me the horse. <laughs> give me the whatever. You, you have, have my dominion. dominion over me. Hey, dude. Let us tell you about a brand called Hey Dude that makes game-changing, lightweight comfort that makes you gasp with delight. Astonishingly easy to slip on, giving you more time to enjoy life's simple pleasures. Unexpected design details that are delightful to discover and bring a grin to your face. Unprecedented versatility that lets you style any look for any occasion. And a huge variety of prints, colors, materials, and styles. You name it, there is a flavor for everyone. Sirocco is the all-new sneaker Hey Dude. Same amazing Hey Dude comfort with maximum comfort insole meeting enhanced outsole for a cushiony and grippy setup. Seamless sock construction and lightweight materials for ridiculous comfort. Go to HeyDudeShoesUSA.com and use code BARSTOOL for 15% off terms apply. That's HeyDudeShoesUSA.com. Dot com use code barstool back to the episode you ever oh, ridden a brother. horse yeah like full sprint i grew up on a ranch do you do so you can ride a fucking really ride a horse i did when yeah, i was like horse. 10 i haven't been i've been on a horse in like 20 years let me tell you the most you, go ahead i'll let you tell your thing then i gotta tell you something you gotta do before you leave arizona the most amazing experience of my life we run buffalo through uh texas and they take us through real horseback riding lessons. How to back your horse up, how to spin him, how to walk him sideways, walk him this way. But more important, you go canter, gallop, and a sprint. <sighs> Sun setting. I've had a couple cold beers. We're getting ready to bring the horses Time in. Time to get on a horse, dude. And, 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 and my, Time and, to break my neck on my a guy fucking goes, horse. My guy goes, let's air him out. I go, all right. And I go, I, I go come on, buck. And cha, this thing takes off. Now, what's happens in a canter, and you know this, a canter, you're like, ow. Yeah, ow, yeah, yeah, it's, ow. A, it's a bad pattern. A gallop, you're like, those are my balls, those are my balls, those are my balls. But when a horse decides to sprint, your body gets into a symbiotic rhythm with him, much like the best sex you've ever had in your life. His head ducks and goes up, like almost like this, and your body goes with him, and you are in the air sprinting, hat flies off, grin from ear to ear and this is me and one horse together hauling ass and then when you want to stop you just put your ass into his saddle put your feet in pull him back yeah hey, buck, come on buck <laughs> fucking greatest goddamn <laughs> feeling in the world oh my get god me, get me to work that way every fucking day <sighs> i show up with a heart on
<laughs> Brother, like you, you were love horses. Yeah. You <laughs> love horses. <laughs> You've never ridden a horse at full speed. No, how fuck great no. is it? It's I haven't been on in a long time, but it is a magical experience. It is a magical. Because what he's talking about when they're in a trot and a yeah, gallop. Yeah, yeah. That shit's not fun. Yeah. You're trying to figure it out. You're doing a whole bunch of different stuff, but when they start going, it's like the easiest time to ride. It's, it wow. literally, you see his his head does yeah. this. You do, so you've seen like raining and cutting and all that stuff. I see, dude. I watch. I watch them clean out their hoofs on Instagram. <laughs> you ever seen them clean out horse hoofs? Yes. I, it's fucking better than Dr. Pimple Popper's ever been. But it's all it is oh, is them no. grabbing yeah, their heel the and worst. picking it up and then picking it out. Yeah, but no, cleaning the Dr. dirt. Dr. Pimple Popper is nail, awesome. Taking the thing off. Oh my god. Do you like that? I, buddy, I don't know I why. I'll watch that shit. I, not the horseshoes. No, no, I I grew up with that. I'm saying yeah. the Doctor Pimple Popper stuff. Oh my god! Oh, you, you like you it? I, it's horror? not. It's not that I like it. It's just I can't stop watching it. Oh my god! I'll get on it and I'll, I'll just watch, see this I'll watch big like fucking thing before I watch that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. Rotten.com. You remember that back in the day, dude? Yeah. Hell yeah. yes. Rotten.com. Oh, because you go up there with your buddies. Yeah. I'd be in college and we'd be like four of us around one small computer watching yeah. Rotten.com. Yeah, man. Some Saudi guy just fucking carving the head off another dude. What it's is, crazy. What was that Louis joke? He goes, the worst part of the beheading. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's talking about how dumb you look after you get beheaded. You like hold your head up and you're like, dude. <laughs> like, so that's why you got he's like, yeah, you gotta be bald. Yeah. So they can't hold you. Hold like your they head can't up. hold your yeah, hair yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god. If you uh, you're probably not you're not gonna be able to do it this time, but if you ever come back to Arizona and you have yourself a free uh Wednesday or Friday night and you go up to Cave Creek, Arizona. It's 25 minutes north of here. You go to a place called the Buffalo Chip. It's the only place in the world you're going to find a horse, a Ferrari, and an old truck parked in the same parking lot. You go into the Buffalo Chip. You pay $10. You get in this little arena. If you have the balls, have a couple of drinks, and you pay $50 and sign a waiver, you can get on a real bull. Oh. In front of a crowd of like 2,000 people. No, thanks. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it was mauled by a bull. You will never do it again. Mauled by, mauled bull. by a bull, yeah. Bulls are terrifying creatures. Uh, yeah. Terrifying. But you, you watch these people. Like, no. You can't Ooh. go ahead and get warm. Let's loosen up and get our, our pacing down. No. The bull goes 100%. I was dressed up, full rodeo clown gear. <laughs> they pull the bull out. He goes, sing, does a circle. And the one thing the guy says to me is, uh, what you want to do is you want to get in the little nook right here on the bull. That's where you want to end up right behind his head, but in front of his body. And so I was like, okay. So the bull looks at me and I start running. He starts running at me, I run at him. I go left, he goes right, we meet in my rib cage. He breaks my ribs, steps on my foot, breaks my foot. I go to the ground, I go to get up to leave and my foot's broken, it doesn't work. So I go to step on it and just goes, uh, and you hear me go, how do I get out of here? <laughs> when getting the wind knocked out of someone is the funniest fucking thing. We were talking about that yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Shane was Wait, hold on. I got to, <laughs> you ran at the bull? I ran at the bull because you don't want to run away from it. You, no, you want to stand still. I don't, I fucked up, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I, you want to stand up. still and go right. And when he goes right, then you go left. Yeah, yeah well, I didn't, I, I thought, I'll you, pick one. Yeah, we, we can find out. We see where we made the issue. Shot, and I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I never fuck with a bull, man. Ever fuck with Dude, a bull. Dude, bulls are terrifying. Are oh. Fucking rough, too. Bulls are the only creatures that Sharks people are ride. Sharks and it's like the most damage you can take for the least amount of money. Dude. They hardly make any money, and you have to practice on them. It's not like you just get on, and like, I'm going to go do the PBR right now. Like, you literally go, to a ranch, get on bulls, ride them enough, and they're like, all right, I think I'm good enough to go do this. Hopefully make $100,000 or whatever it is. Dude. It I, is, the risk versus reward is so ridiculously bad. I tamed lions, I fought a bear, I, I got mauled by a bull, I swam out of the shark with great white shark, out of the cage with great white sharks. I was an MMA fighter. I was, I did all this for this one TV show, and the bull was the one thing that fucked me up. And here's what's crazy, this is like, not, this is like 2003, so they don't, internet isn't what it is today. I get mauled by a bull, we got like 15 seconds of footage and they're like, we gotta do it again. I go, what? And they go, we don't have enough footage to make a TV show out of this. We have 15 seconds of fucking footage, get back in there. And so I spent with a broken foot in a, in a barrel, they were just rolling me around in a barrel and a bull's knocking a barrel around. And you know how hard broken ribs hurt. I've never, but I would imagine. Uh, no, you actually, if, have you ever broken your ribs? I had like ribs out, but never broken them. Oh, cartilage damage, but never broken ribs. Oh, bro, I've broken my ribs a lot. <laughs> I've broken my ribs all. Sneezing and breathing, and that's breathing, probably, yeah. sleeping, laying in bed trying to sleep on broken ribs. You're probably a deep breather too. <laughs> <laughs> dude, we were we were on a tour bus, all of us, dude. It's us two, we Big J, Joey, Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was a fucking fart den. Just dudes. 
It was like hot from farts back there. It was disgusting. Dude. The best is when you'd be in Shane and I have bunks facing each other, and you hear Shane's thing open. And you go, "Hey, hey, what's up?" And then just yeah. <laughs> tour buses. Yeah, that was very tour fun. Buses are fucking yeah. nice. I like those a lot. Are you are you still on tour buses? I feel like every I time you put one. out a promotion, I just bought one. So you're on a tour bus. How many days out of the year? Oh, well, this year it's what what this year? What's today? Uh, today is February 9th. February 9th, so 39 days. I mean, oh. I'm living on a tour bus. I, did, I was, I've been home two days this year. I've been home two days. How do you find the energy? Because I'm looking at my boy right yeah, here. I, He's I know that I know that I get to hang out with you guys. Like I don't get this every day. Mm -hmm. Like with Shane, Mark, you guys. Like this isn't this isn't every day. This is a treat for me. <laughs> so and we got fucking four sold, sold out shows at the Mullet. Yeah, we got a great stage. Fuckface destroyed last night. Did you? Destroyed. <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> you know. He fucking. <laughs> yeah. taking a shit. That's why you get the shades on stage. There's shades. Uh... There's, like, there's like so much space between where I'm shitting and he's on stage. I hear him get the biggest laugh that turns into a fucking round of applause. Like the, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, my... Dude, murdered last night. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, so, how you're feeling today? Like, how's it gonna go tonight? Like, do you are you gonna get over this? Are you gonna be okay? What this hangover? Yeah, oh, I'm fine. No, <laughs> this is nothing. I'm you're a war dog. Right. You're a war dog. Yeah. I'll be all right. I yeah. When we did Red Rocks, yeah. I thought someone fell down the fucking stairs. <laughs> when we did Red Rocks, we got after it. The night of Red Rocks, right? Yeah. Next morning, I got. I think I got IVs planned. I got everything planned. We go over to Shane, and he's like, ah. Uh, and we're going to Wilco that night. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm not getting out of bed. And I was like, come on, man. He's like, ah, I can't do it. I can't do it. The whole day, and you worry, the end of the night is me and Shane and Mark in a, in a limo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we kind of know yeah. by just screaming them like, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're, not, we're, not, yeah. we're making no fucking sense. We're screaming. That was so up, fun, dude. Crying, fucking laughing. You're singing, you're like, da, 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 da. <laughs> the whole song, like for three minutes. Dude. The whole song, we're yeah. just screaming, no lyrics. This is the best night of my life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, once you do a show, it's gone. You yeah. hang over, it goes away instantly. The second you go on stage, it's gone. But was it like that when, when you, you first done. started doing comedy, or did yeah, it yeah, have yeah. to become that? Trying. So you get fired up every single time. Do you, you get nervous before or no? Yeah, I was nervous last night. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. You could tell. Fucking walked out there, packed house, people are quiet. cheering. Yeah. I'll just, the guy that got canceled, he's fucking yeah, hilarious. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's that guy. Republicans in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, there was a lot. There's a lot of Republicans. We, we had a, there was a lot. <laughs> yeah. They were fired off, yeah. dude. I made fun of Biden once, and they were like, oh, this guy's a genius, dude. <laughs> I was like, Biden's old as fuck, right? They were like, oh, oh, oh bravo. Dude, he's, he fucking, first of all, I mean, like, I'll just say this out loud. This is the thing that's impressive is like, obviously, he murders you know, when we do the shows right now, Shane's Shane is like, if you you cannot see him live, mm -hmm. if you haven't already bought tickets, all his shows are sold out for the rest of the year. You cannot see him live. That's, That's where you want to be as a comic. Like you can, you're going nice. to find, bro, take the flowers, <laughs> take the flowers. No, I don't like the flowers. That's where you want to be. No one likes the flowers. But yeah. like, he That's where you want to be as a comic. Yeah. No, the way we started this podcast is you love the flowers. The oh, flowers are flowers. awesome. What are my flowers? Your buddy, flowers? you're a fucking stud. Brother, you got a move. Red Rock, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, got man. it. Hey, yeah. you got it all. I mean, $25 million you have like, last year. You have, right now. Uh, your YouTube channel, you have like 17 <laughs> shows. You do like 17 up. shows plus touring. Was asking about me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nate Bargazzi said I'm the fucking goat. We get it. <laughs> I'm selling out the Boston Garden. Yeah, that I mean, was yeah, crazy. I'm fucking killing it. Did you think, you, <laughs> did, you, did you think like before, uh, you told us a story on the last podcast about how like um, you did this tour. I'm going to butcher it, but you did this tour and like you were talking to Segura and you're like, how much are you getting paid? And he's like 20 grand a, a set. And you're like, I'm getting paid like 2,500. It was, it was 2,000. Oh, my bad. I didn't, I didn't mean to. I was doing a show but, if you, right? but if you were there, did you imagine your life being here now? I, I never in 1 million years Real, thought I'd ever be where I am. Not in one million years. And by the way, Shane never thought he'd be where he is. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Is you speaking for you? No, but no, he's he's right. It's just you. No, no one. <laughs> Shane, he'll fucking tell you. The guy. Yeah. He's a fucking loser, dude. He had no idea he was gonna get out of that. He was gonna be nowhere. Yeah. The dudes that you don't want to see are the ones that are like, I knew this would happen. 
And they're, they're, we have them in our yeah. business, and they're fucking idiots. Are they right, though? Are yeah. they at the point where usually they think? Usually they get canceled. Yeah. Usually, like, usually like they, there's some other stuff in there. Mm. Like, that, that, it's, a, it's a narcissistic mentality, and they don't take care of people genuinely. genuinely. Mm. But the average dude, the dude you like hanging out with, like me or Shane or, or fucking Rogan. Right? Do you think Rogan ever yeah. thought he'd be where he was going to be? Rogan, if you look at, if you read the fucking first two chapters of the Joe Rogan story... There's no way that child ends up there. It just doesn't happen. You get to chapter fucking 14 and of him getting beat up by a girl in high school on a bus. You're like, this guy doesn't commentate the UFC. So no, I don't think, I think the people you, the, the people I like are the people that never saw it happening. You know, it's different than pro athletes because pro athletes, their whole lives, I played with this guy named Brad Radke and he was, Everyone knew he was going pro. He oh, he knew he was going pro. He's the best player out of all of us. Us comics are always like, I never in a million fucking years thought I'd sell out the Boston Garden. Never. Never thought I'd be doing an arena tour. Never thought I'd have a movie. I never thought I'd be happily married. I mean, I just was like, I'm still kind of shocked. That's a, the real shocker. Yeah. Like, I can fuck a 52-year-old with a straight face and be like, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. Yeah. This is it. That's crazy. Right. Makes me get a little bump on the HBCU videos and be like, honey, we're getting after oh, it. This is yeah. time now. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking awesome. It is comedy seems like a really like it's not a linear trajectory. Like you gotta kind of fall into it, yeah? Think, Maybe not yeah. like you gotta go like, hey, you're funny. Because people we can all sit here and be like, hey, you're pretty funny. You should do comedy, but then it's like getting the balls to go up and do it. Will did it, right? Yeah, yeah he was I, good I, too. Was good. He was that. good. Yeah. I asked both of you guys about a joke. <clears throat> Shane, looking back, is so on brand too. Shane's like, let that one ride. Yeah, do and that joke. Tell me a different way to maneuver yeah. that joke. No, word it exactly that way. <laughs> he goes, yeah. Let's... What's the joke? The joke was like, yeah, black people jump high. So I was like, nice. <laughs> no, yes, it's like, uh, dude, it's a great joke. It was like being a new parent, and then it's like, uh, oh, yeah, it was, I it wanted, was to, oh, yeah, I wanted to leave my family. That's why I respect, you know. Yeah, no, we got you. Change it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I wrote it. That's how I, jokes work. Joke's better if you don't say the second part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to leave my family. That's what I love about the, you know. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, like I'm so mad. I just want to drive by in a car and shoot people like the, the guys that do that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, that's fucking crazy, here. man. That is wild. Yeah, no, that's the cool. I, I'm. It's funny. I, I, you always can appreciate where you were and where you are is hard to appreciate or it's hard to accept compliments. So like when you compliment Shane now, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's hard to accept him. But when Shane is wherever he is in two years, he'll be able to see dead. dudes hap, hap, it happen to him and go Passed like, away. go like, <laughs> certainly dead. <laughs> they asked me that. They go, do you think you're going to outlive Shane? And I was like, that? I think, what the fucking, fuck, dude? I, think, I think he was like, I was like, I think so. I mean, yeah. the way him and Mark Norman rebound, I think. Yeah, I yeah true. <laughs> yeah, you rebound, dude. I, I, I just, I'm oh, tuning yeah. And then you're hung over, you're laying in bed, you hear him screaming. Shane, wake up! Ah! We got a masseuse out here, Fuck Shane. It. Yeah, I almost, haircut, I almost Shane. got my haircut out of like an obligation. You like, see? I went out there and she was like, I'll do it. I was like, okay. And then I sat down. I was like, no, I'm fine. You don't need a haircut? I do, kind of, but I was hungover. I didn't want to sit there and get a haircut. Oh, so and then a chiropractor. Yeah, we got a chiropractor? Yeah. Is he too much in the mornings? No, it's nice. It helps. It gets you up. I would have laid in bed. How long does it help before it hurts, though? Yeah. Because you got a buddy in the first three, four days. Like, hey, come on, let's go. And you're like, oh, this fucking no, guy. No, it's for always him. something like when we were at uh, Bristol, at the Speedway. Yeah. So I was on the bus, hungover. I was like, I'm not fucking. He was like, get up. You got to go. Get up. And I was like, dude, no. Shut the fuck up, dude. And then he was like, come on. And then we get out there, and we're literally taking laps in the, what's that car? What's the car called? Shane says, I'm going to sleep in. And you respect you do respect that for the majority of the time. You respect it because I know that when I say it, I mean it, and I need it. And I go, got you. And then we go over to Bristol to the to the Speedway. Yeah. And they bring out a pace car and they take us on laps at like 170 miles an hour, 150 miles an hour. Unbelievable. And, I, and it's and I was hungover too. And the number one thing when I got done, I mean, you're inches from the wall, and and they're it's so scary. It's the scariest, one of the scariest things yeah. I've ever done in my life. But the second I got done, the first thing I th thought was, I don't think I had a stroke. 
And then I went, if I didn't have a stroke, Shane won't have a stroke. <laughs> and I called him. I said, you need to get the fuck out of bed and experience this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You and Big J need to get the fuck out of bed and come yeah, over here Big right J. now. And I was like, send a car to get them right fucking now. Go get them right now. Yeah. And they both got up and they're like, no, no. And then the second <laughs> Shane got in, he was like, that was fucking worth it. That was incredible. Yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be shit like that. It's never not. If he's making you get up, it's something that's actually cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Comics respect, uh, everyone respects our, their boundaries of like, because sometimes you, you've got, you, you, sleep's the best thing for you. And and whatever the thing is, like some when people don't want to party, you try not to push them into it. I always try to push yeah, them into definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. I always push them into it. You sound like a killer. Oh, I love, I love breaking someone. I love when they don't want to party and then they do. That's yeah. the best person to party with. Like I know a guy from Red Rocks who didn't want to eat mushrooms and then we got him. <laughs> yeah, too. had a lot. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah it was lot. pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. How many, when you say take mushrooms, how much are you taking? You're actually not taking much, like. Not much. We have great mushrooms coming this week. Oh. Uh, yeah. Like you, no, guys, you guys, don't like, you guys don't trip. Oh. You just take like enough to feel I good. I actually, <laughs> I actually I, in real honesty, I, every time I've been around mushrooms, I've taken just the babyest nibble in, in like fear of like, I, I don't want to get into my head lately because I'm afraid of death. Bear. You're fucking staring down the barrel. <laughs> For a guy yeah, yeah. 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 dance with it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, what the, I'm really afraid of death. Anyway, I ran right at this fucking bull. <laughs> yeah. Sharks are bad. Yeah. He's fucking sharks, all, all that stuff. Dude, sharks move with intention. Sharks are the, like terrifying. Snakes are the most terrifying thing to me, but sharks are, pro are up there as well. Sharks, I was in the water with a great white shark, and it, well, we were with a bunch of blue sharks first, and blue sharks are easy. Put your hand on them, move them away. Very easy. What's a, a blue shark? Like a, like a mako? Like a, like a, no, not a mako. A blue shark's a blue shark. It's a type of shark. Oh, it's just a blue shark. Yeah, it's, a blue, it's called a blue shark, yeah. And so uh, <laughs> there's a joke I want to say, but yeah, yeah, like a blue shark. That's yeah. what people call them. <laughs> yeah. Blue sharks. You get it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they that one blue. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden the blue sharks disappear and uh and I see a shadow in the in the background and I was like, what the fuck is that? I'm with this dude named John Manley and he's like uh he's like an oceanographer and he's like pops up and he's like I th I think there's a bigger shark in the water and I look down and I see this shark it's not like you see when you see the videos on YouTube or on where it's, it's going slow and the guy's filming it go over him and it's going slow. When it wants to move, it moves with such intention that you could not stop it. It went like dart, 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 and it was on us, and I was on the boat in a fucking second eating a cheeseburger. I swear <laughs> to God, the woman was making cheeseburgers. And I was like, give me a cheeseburger. I'm not getting back in that fucking water. Yeah. That thing was scary. Great white shark. If it wants to eat you, there's nothing you can do. Was it a great white shark? Yeah, it was a great white shark. That's, yeah, being, and you were you were out there free diving. I've been in the water with great white sharks a number of times. A was, number of times. So after the first time, you thought I'll I'll do that again. Oh yeah, it's magical. Great, I've we, never South ever. Africa, ever. South Africa. Have you seen the video of the guy like in like a, it looks like he's in like a glass case? Yes. And the great white shark comes and just fucks the glass case up. Like you thought this was gonna protect you? Yeah. Like it's a crazy, and you want to get in there, just chilling. Yeah. Here's why. It's. You only, only people that get to experience that are the people that die from it, really. And so when to experience it, like we were in South Africa, the visibility was bad. Like and so they reason. dragged the great white sharks up to you, but you could only see them at the last second when they bit on the cage, much like a shark attack. So getting to experience what a shark attack would feel like was fucking exhilarating. Those cold beers taste amazing. When you get in the boat and you've done that all day and you're like, yeah, I'll take a beer. Fuck yeah. yeah. And then you're taking a boat in the sunset and you're like, I, I lived life tonight. Like, and you, you sit on the edge of your bed, go, do I jack off tonight? I got to do something, right? <laughs> Fucking nice. So you're scared Damn. You're scared of death, but you want to figure out how do I get as close to death as possible. I'm a, I have a hard time with impulse. So I love the roll of the dice. I love the fucking, let's do something a little crazy. Um, but yeah, I have a ter terrifying feeling. I've done everything there is to do. I've, I've skydived. I've done uh, bungee jumps. I jumped off stratosphere. I've done it all. But I'm terrified of it. Uh, but I did a, I did a, a non-controlled just drop into a net from like 160 feet. <laughs> they just dropped you into a fucking net. That was fucking scary. It was like a, it was like a ride or did you have to do this whole like setup? Technically like with, used to be ride? until it started defecting. And so now. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. And they were dropping people onto the ground. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Is it, Jack, do you, you go get, uh, Christian's going to be here in a minute. 
Christian Okoye? Yeah, you know, I mean, Christian Okoye? Christian McCaffrey. Uh, yeah, you can bring him down here. Is it McCra McCaffrey? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty fucking exciting. Who's great, great, great White Hope. Oh, great shake his hand. Yeah. I want to shake, shake his hand. Uh, shake uh, San Francisco 49ers running back. He was with the Carolina Panthers yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. God, so played at Stanford. Oh, fuck, never mind. Great White Hope, dude. Yeah, he's oh. the one that gives us all like, oh, we, we still got it. Yeah. Christian Okoye, I interviewed him one time. Mm -hmm. And so we get done and everyone's like, hey, can we get a picture? And so they're like, yeah, sure. So he comes in and I go, I go, and they go, any more? And I go, yeah, one with me and you with our shirts off. And he's like, huh? And I go, just like, you holding me? And he goes, I go, I'm joking. And he goes, oh, okay. Like he's doesn't, he's Nigerian, his mm. English isn't the best. So at the end of the day, we're done shooting, and he comes up to me and gets in my face. He goes, I want to uh, take a picture with your shirt off, and I hold you. And I went, what? And he goes, now, take your shirt off. And I go, no. But, and he goes, I got you funny, man. <laughs> fucking terrifying. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, fucking yeah, terrifying. Right, <laughs> Dude, uh, going back to death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's ride that again. You said you've done everything. What Do you have a line? Like there's something in this earth you, you will not do. They say base jumping. Once you base jump, you know how you're going to die. That's like they say, because once you base jump, you go, oh, I'm doing this for the rest of my life. This is fucking amazing. Really? Yeah, that's what they say. The, especially the wing suits. They're like, yeah. if you do that. Those little squirrel that's boys. How you're that's fucking a quick dying. death, though. Yeah. Oh. You're going a fucking yeah. 300 miles yeah. down. Happened into a to, um, rock. Did you see the guy who hit the wire and his body just liquefied? Just no fucking yeah. way. You can see it's online. You can see it. And I, I went diving with sharks with his wife. I went diving with sharks with his wife. Who is, well, now um, he's <laughs> who is, uh, who's the guy? Uh, I think his name's like Jerem. No, you do you follow uh, freestyle motocross at all or X Games? Sure. Travis Pastrana, Nitro yeah, Circus, yeah, all yeah, those yeah. heroes of mine. But there was one guy who does base jumping. Uh, well, I forget his name though, but he was in a squirrel suit and he hit a bridge going like 180 miles an he hour. Might be the same fucking guy. Is he dead? He, he hit a bridge he's going 180 right. miles an hour. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, I heard about yeah. it. But you said really? a wire. No, 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 no. I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up because this dude's fucking. I think that guy might be. I think that might be the same fucking guy. Was he with his buddy? And then he, his buddy, he ended up all over his buddy, and his oh buddy knew God, he was dead bro. and had to finish his squirrel suit, knowing that his friend just died. No, okay, I don't. That's the guy I don't think there's a video about. of this. He said that's the guy. I'm like, could you imagine um, just knowing your boy just got got and you're still just in the air like doing something pretty fun. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. oh, this is oh, yeah. oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> on. Who else? Who else do you guys have on the show this week? Uh, we got him, Fred Warner, uh, Jeffrey Star, Jeffrey Star. Jeffrey you know, Star, the makeup. Eric yeah. Rona. Yeah. Eric yeah. Rona is the guy's really? name. Yeah. Yes, I had to get that out. Is Jeffrey Star on? <laughs> We're going to tomorrow. Oh, dude, we not. Do you not hear about it? Kiss him. For real? I, I was in Wyoming with him for a week. Yeah. Fuck yeah. No, I wasn't. Uh, but I'll tell you what happened. So Jeffree Star puts out a picture of him and with him and this, this, his legs crossed with another dude wearing Vans. Yes. And he's like, oh, can you guess who my NFL boy is? We're going to Wyoming. I guess you. Do you guess me? Yeah. yeah well, here we are, him. buddy. So I'm, I'm watching all this thing play out. I literally uh, just tweet out, am I in Wyoming right now? He quote tweets it and he's like, do you need an invite? So... Obviously, that starts blowing up. He ends up DMing me, and he's like, hey, thanks for having fun with this whole thing. Like, a lot of people wouldn't do that. Like, I want to come on your show sometime. Yeah. And I'm like, we'll be out in Arizona for the Super Bowl. Are you going to come out? And he's like, I'll let you know. Ends up, we end up talking a bunch. Fantastic individual. Yeah. And he's going to come on the show tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Oh, yes. Yes. And I it's so it. cool because it's like, my there's a lot, of, there's a lot of dudes in my DMs right now. Yeah. There's a lot of dudes in my DMs right now. I bet. That are trying to get yeah. after yeah. it. Trying to Still bust. a compliment. Trying to bust. This guy's yeah. trying to fucking bust. <laughs> Which one, if you had to fuck, if you said had a to, word in 15 minutes. Fuck, one of the boys, which one would it be? And then if you had to have one, I had fuck, to fuck you. one of them? Yeah. Get fucked or fuck? What are we talking here? I don't think I don't think I have a chance. Hey, after you ask me the question? I think me and him will flip a coin. I have a feeling I look at you and I'm like, I know where I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect, dude. No, I like it, you know. No, me and you would be like, <laughs> what? Oh, by the way, I'm talking about size. I'm talking energy. You're saying you yeah, could. Energy, yeah. me and you would be like, well, I don't know. What are you up yeah, to? What are you yeah, We would I have a feeling you'd look at me and like, I'm. Definitely not getting fucked in the ass tonight. We would, we would connect. We would connect. You say I wouldn't take it? You know, what is you your partner want? Bro, you yeah. don't know me. <laughs> Shane, who would you fuck in the ass and who would you want to be fucked in the ass by? <laughs> put me in the mix, too. Uh, bro, I won't come in you. You won't? Uh-uh. Well, then what's the point, bro? <laughs> I want that. That's the whole, that's the best feeling. Yeah, if you do get fucked in the ass, dude, you won't come in You're going to want a cream pie. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a mess after. No, oh, no, 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 no,
Ooh. Oh my god. Holding the cum. No, cum, cum spot. Uh, Chris, Chris McCaffrey just walked yeah. into the building. Hey, buddy, I can't wait to have you on the podcast in a little bit. Thank yeah. you for joining us. I'm Literally walked in. This is the first thing. Yeah, we're going to put was, Christian in it too. Christian, He's also. Hey, if he Christian, did, I would make love with Christian. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> make love with Me and Christian. Christian would make love. Uh, what do you want, sweetheart? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, that he body. Seems, I just this is the first time I've seen him in real life. He seems like a gentle lover. Like he's a giver. Oh. Wait, where did you grow up? Denver. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh that's Denver's. Oh, you yeah. hear that? That's some, yeah. That Those like people somebody. are really in touch with Earth. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Denver. What? Who would I fuck? Yeah, who'd you hook up with? <laughs> Will, Will, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Will wants me to say Will so bad. Yeah, yeah, say Will, dude. All right, I would fuck Will. Whoa, what the fuck? I knew this was gonna happen. This That's is how you guys crazy. operate. This is how you guys operate. Do you want to? Do you want to say it. why? Do you want to say why? Why? Yeah. We just had such a good time last night. Like That's crazy. It almost happened. <laughs> I felt like last night it was getting hey, close. Fuck my kids for making me miss out and getting fucked by you, dude. We had dude. a good time, and we yeah. At one point, we almost kissed. We like both leaned in to talk to each other, and it was. Like, Kind of each other's cheeks. Oh, dude. <laughs> I played it off like yeah, cool, but also both. like, uh, it kind of felt nice. Yeah, Are you was... partying tonight? We'll see. Definitely. We'll see. You're my voice. I didn't do any more. He's gotta do, you got to do the dozen yeah. trivia tonight, right? Yeah, and I got to get that passport in the morning. Oh, brother. What Do you guys have a show Friday night? We have a show every night. Going. Yeah, I want to go. I'm saying we want to go. Yeah, yeah, go Can we yeah. come back and hang out with you guys? Of course. Yeah. There's nothing better than meeting somebody and then asking them for favors. Do you mind if we just do? No, of course. We'll with you guys all night. Bring everybody. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to go Friday night with them? You're coming? Done. This is going to be awesome. It's Friday. Hey, it's add Christian cool. in the mix, though. Would you, would you, yes. fuck, you'd fuck Christian over Will? Can I see you with your hat off? Can I see you with your hat off? Take your hat off, Christian. He's got a sharp oh, hairdo. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's good hair. genetics. Yeah, he's a good looking cat. Yeah. yeah. He you looks got, like a you troop, have great dude. genetics. Huh? He looks like a shirt off. Are those your real teeth? What? Are those your real teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out Christian, dude, for being off, cool man. from the get go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty fucking pissed off, though. I'll be honest. Why? I don't know. I thought we could have had something cool. We could fuck. I mean, yeah, yeah, but I'm not gonna do sloppy you seconds. Fuck that you're moving furniture. There's fucking. You think so? There's some big yeah, guys that brought away. You say, so you're taking Will too. Uh, well, I mean, uh, damn. Yeah. Okay. I might, okay. I might, yeah. I gotta, dude, I just, I might feel like it would be like. Odd man out. <laughs> I feel like. I got Jeffrey. Yeah, you do got Jeffrey. I got Jeffrey. Oh. And I got Joey uh, Camasta. That's true. You got Yeah, a good so line. I got a good little yeah. lineup. I got a good, I got a good roster. Yeah. <laughs> a roster of dudes that would fuck me. <laughs> I said to this someone the other day, I'd hate to find out I was gay now and know that all my good franchise playing years were behind me. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like the guy jerking off the corner going, take your shirt off. <laughs> well. <laughs> you just turned into a foreigner? You think gay guys are from other places? <laughs> Please remove your shirt. Get off slower. Oh, dude, this yeah. has been an awesome yeah, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. This has been incredible. You did a hell of a job. I tried. You did a, you but did a great job. You said really about a tweet's part. worth of words, though. I'll be honest. That's what I'm here you for, the bro. Part, though. Yeah, I'm here. You look the fucking part. <laughs> <laughs> no, appreciate you guys. Boys, men, women, people of all ages. Obviously, we all start the new year with the best intentions when it comes to sticking to a fitness routine. We are three months in now, and sticking to it is hard. That's why the FitBot app is changing the game. The FitBot app creates a workout program that's personalized to your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. Start making progress towards your fitness goals today with 25% off a FitBot subscription. The boys got you. Just pick a fitness goal, select your equipment. Whether you're in the house, you go to a gym, wherever it is, you pick the equipment and let them know the equipment that you have. And FitBot will create a custom workout program specifically for you. The app switches up your exercises to avoid overtraining or burnout while keeping your workouts fresh and fun. Your program also changes based on your personal progress for maximized results. A full year of FitBot is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. Keep up your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBot. 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbot.me slash bussin. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash bussin. Back to the episode. Yeah. Not sure. When does the movie drop? Uh, Memorial Day weekend. What's it called? Thousand theaters. It's called The Machine. It's... Uh, 
I think everyone's gonna like it. I mean, everyone's super excited about it. It's just, the response has been really good, so I'm, I'm excited, and I'll be promoting the living fuck out of it. I was it. gonna say, I think we might be doing something again soon because uh, uh, this partnership with Netflix, they want us to do like a pod with all of our shirts off. Oh, f- so we might Wait, be hold, able on, to hold on, hold and- on. So for real, because uh, yeah, we just got a we just got an offer. We just got a, me and Tom got an offer to do a read for my movie. Like random as fuck. Yeah. Well, you got an offer to do a read for your own movie. Yeah, and it's Netflix advertising. No, no, no. It's not, my, Netflix is my special. My, this is a movie. This is a, in movie theaters. That's so fucking no, cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. Netflix. No, but yeah, someone did say like, "Hey, in May, came up, like, the three of us are gonna do a shirtless pod." Yeah. And I haven't eaten since. Yeah. It was like four days ago. Dude, don't worry. I don't, I don't fucking, my body is disgusting. No, I've seen, dude, your body, you, everyone sees your body always. Don't talk to yourself that way. Yeah. I'm, Positive I'm thinking. You, you look fantastic. Yeah, and that's you why. Well? <laughs> you said, oh, I'm definitely fucking yeah, you. Yeah. Don't talk to yourself that way. You're beautiful, Bert. <laughs> yeah, well, sweet. You're tatted up, bad boy. Dude, but I kind of like got that. Boy. I'll be smoking cigarettes in the corner. He'd be fucking Taylor, and he'd all of a sudden look at himself in the mirror, and you're like, are, are you not looking at me anymore? <laughs> oh, bro, what? I got about bad boy? That's a <laughs> oh, that is a tough vibe to get off. Like, just keep going. I'm just fucking looking in the mirror. Oh, yeah, true. That looks so true. fucking good. Yeah. It's missionary. I thought we're I was getting fucked. Oh, I thought I was getting fucked. Oh, how do you look at you? Oh, we're... Why you look at me? No, I'm looking in the mirror. But hold on. Yeah, but you... back? I don't know. How do you... Never seen how do you do fucking? No, it's gay missionary. It's the gayest possible sex. Yeah, the thing that flops around, right? Yeah, there you're going... No, 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 no. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna... Side saddle? I think that's 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 right. With your legs over okay. my thighs. Turn it like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm about to. I'm like, all right, I'm yeah. fine. All right, what a Am fucking way to end this apart? podcast. Will Compton's got to pee. Guys, gentlemen, what a pleasure. Thank you, brother. What a pleasure. You, we'll Thank see you, you guys tomorrow. You Cannot tomorrow. wait. Please subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Hammer the shit out of the comments. Love you all so much. Oh.